Hey, what's up? What's happening? How's it going? Hope you're enjoying your uh, long weekend here. Not over yet. Tonight, <laughs> tonight going to be playing uh, Sorcery Part 4. Pick up right where we left off. The Sorcery Council is, should be here. It is... It is nine people, so we got to make sure they're here. Uh, by the way, the Sorcery Council changes every week. I don't even know who's on it anymore. Sorcery Squad. There's one. There's one. There's one of the council members right there. Okay. Did you ever know... No. <laughs> All right. Are you guys ready? You guys ready to get back into sorcery? I think there's probably going to be another. I am. I'm trying to think of how long this took last time. We've done one, three, four hours stream in part four. I think it's about 15 ish. 17-ish hours. Which is removing the moments feature. Yeah, I... We didn't really care too much about them here anyways. Aren't half of the moments on this channel just complete fucking nonsense? I think I specifically did like seven in a row that just meant nothing. My accolades. We cared. I cared. Oh... Remember, we cared. Oh. <laughs> I just... I'm sorry. <laughs> Tell me how you really feel. <laughs> all, all seven... Oh, my God. They are kind of a pain to get right, since you had to fit a moment in a 60-second clip. I don't think there was anything wrong with them. It's a cool idea. But I... I didn't really... I mean, mods would use it sometimes. I did that one time last year. I just removed them all for the month because that was funny. But whatever. Apparently that's going away. I That's new news to me. Bro, stop distracting me. I'm writing a research paper, Devil Spawn. What are you writing your paper about? <laughs> Devil Spawn? That's your question. Yeah, I mean, like, well, how about this? Go do your homework. Go do your, go do your paper. I only watch clip compilations. When do you start being funny? Uh, never again. I'm officially retired, so... Um, uh, literally never again. So, sorry. You probably have to find some... You're probably gonna have to find it somewhere else. I'm never gonna I'm never gonna make a joke ever again. Ever. Okay. I still got it. I still got it. Ban that person for even questioning if I would make a funny noise. I know that's not what they said, but I don't care. Alright, you guys ready? My mother got food poisoning. How do I help? Okay. First of all, it's sorry to hear that. Second of all, just if your mother yells down, I need a Gatorade. You go get the fucking Gatorade. You understand? You go get it. Did you see the hard drive article? I did. <laughs> Very recently. Like that was the one of that was the last thing that I saw before turning the stream on. I was like, hey, did you see this? I was like, oh, I guess you. 
Yeah, I guess so. I, okay, I don't, I'll tell you, I don't, I try not to pay that much attention to many things. Because I'm, I told you, I'm very disconnected from social media. So sometimes I'll just hear, Hey dude, look at this. Do you see this picture of your face? I, I, I guess. What's the context of this picture? So that's cool though. That's fun. I mean, there are things that I, you know, I, what, what was written about me, you know, my accolades. That's cool with me. If you're going to write about my accolades, then absolutely. I'd love to read it. <laughs> Somebody said it. Good. Humble brag. Do you feel like a celebrity? No, no, I don't fucking want to be a celebrity. No, that's we're not going to use that language. I am an e-clown and that's it. I am a certified e-clown with my own certification. I certified myself. Don't call me that. Call me an e-clown. But no, I mean, it, it, I guess it depends. I try to stay grounded because I don't want to think of myself that way because then it's like, Mr. Celebrity, look at me. No. No, I just make jokes on the internet sometimes. All right, you guys good? Let's go. They picked the worst picture for that article. You look deranged in it. Guys, there are no pictures of me where I don't look like that. Do you understand? I have never, in 13 years straight, I have never gotten in front of a camera that was taking still photography to use anywhere. Like, oh, hey, there, of course I had to get my headshots. I had to get my pictures taken. Every picture of me on the internet is of me sitting in a chair with a blown up webcam image, because it's always at the bottom of the screen, or it's running at such a shit bit rate that even when it is blown up, it looks terrible. I've never taken like real professional headshots. <laughs> the dollhouse. Yeah, the reason why people use that dollhouse image from like the red sex thing is because that's probably one of the only front-facing pictures I have of myself. That's the only one where the angle is correct for my face. All the other ones are just weird, taken from a webcam. Stop stalling? Hey, I'm gonna stall as long as I want. Your stream, your stream is too high quality. No, it's not. Stall more? But uh, it's, it's funny that uh, we've all seen the picture of me leaning back with my mouth open and my teeth showing. That's used a lot. It's funny, like, oh, hey, what do you think of, hey, here's a picture of Jerma that we're going to use. The one where he's leaning back with his mouth open and his teeth out. And his mouth is just open, sitting back in a chair. But who cares? I don't care. If I cared, I would have gotten pictures taken a long, long time ago. Which one? You know the one. It's the one where I'm leaning, my mouth is open, my teeth are kind of showing. And my head's tilted. My teeth are... My front teeth are showing. You it's, you guys know which one, because there's three. There are three pictures of me. It's, it's two. But anyways, you guys ready? Let's go. We literally don't know the picture. You do. You know. You know the picture. Okay, you ready? What's he talking about? Uh, you kind of you need to know. We're talking about there was an article that was written about me. It was a jokey article. It was funny. It was on hard drive. They're funny. And uh, yeah, you, the, the mods got it. And we were just talking about it for a few seconds. 
They got your job wrong. They said digital clown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not accurate. Okay, let's go. That was an 11 minute stall. No, oh, that's it. That's amateur hour. That is nothing. I've stalled for like 40 minutes before. That's nothing. That's nothing. Okay, here we go. Uh, TLDR. Hope you're having a good weekend. Hope you're, uh... <laughs> Alright, let's go. I'm gonna go. Alright, you emerge from the alley into the... Why did I need to stop to do that? You emerge from the alley into the edge of the main square. What happened last episode? Everybody. We got into... Uh, we made it into Aizaman. We made it into Mampang. We are now at the steps of the fortress of the Archmage. Such a teacher question. Yeah, I just told you guys to open up your textbooks. So where do we leave off? Okay. In my sorcery playthrough. Would you guys have a lot more fun in school if you had homework based on these streams? You had to come back with like a worksheet filled out of what we did today. I feel like that would be awful. Alright, I'm gonna go right into the square. You would be getting a very poor education if, you, if that happened. Alright, the air moves a little around you, still icy but fresh. You stride out into the middle of the public square where Manpang's inhabitants go about their business. In the center is a huge statue of a faceless man holding a crown aloft. The Archmage. Let's see. Let's look at it. Look around. Many people here are simply passing through, but several are browsing the market on the west side. You also spot several guards to the north, clustered around a road that leads upwards. Okay, look at the statue. The statue seems unimaginably old, and yet the Archmage depicted here is definitely holding the crown of kings. Has he been planning this theft for such a long time then? Or is this prophecy a celebration of a day destined to come? I forget what you can do here. Should I give the statue depression? The statue is not an animal. I don't think we can talk to it. Zap it? I don't think that's a good idea either. Can I read the statue's mind? Drawing the skull cap from your pack, you cast the spell. From all around the square come a multitude of... Oh, it's everybody. A multitude of thoughts. You concentrate to pick one out. A nearby monk is shaking with fear. Those red eyes. They are God-fearing, but I fear them. You remove the cap once more. There are guards patrolling more frequently even here. They are patrolling frequently even here. You'll have to be careful to blend in. I think it's just sus. That's the easy. That We're doing sus. Come on. Okay, you turn the starlight into alignment around you. A calm voice speaks into your thoughts. You receive a strong feeling of trepidation about the alley to the east. Being so near the gates means there is a greater number of merchants and travelers here. The further into the keep you go, the inhabitants will become increasingly wary of outsiders. Maybe I can't really do anything with it. What if I go? What can I make? Can I just make a move? Oh shit! All right, now this is important. All right, where are we going? Remember, I don't have any rewinds, so this is important. I don't know if I want to put all these on a pole, but I'm gonna pick out a few. 
I'm going to pick out Archway. So in here, this building here. I'm going to pick out North side. So Archway, North, or the Market. So we're going to go up North, which goes up here. East goes into this Archway, or West to the Market. If we can get a poll, one of the moderators can do that, please. would be awesome. Uh, okay. The markets are always fun. They are always fun, but what's in this building? I got a raspberry tea tonight. Anybody was keeping score. It's good. Go to the bathroom? I already did. <laughs> Why would you... Okay. Oh, what are the poll? Uh, the options are North, Archway, or Market. A lot of decisions to make. Go pee. I, I, I try to go empty my bladder and other areas before stream because I don't want to have to get up. I want to be able to sit here for at least an hour or two. Why did you phrase it like that? I don't know, because... I don't know, people are weird. Because <laughs> if I said, well, you see, what I do before every stream is I take a shit and I empty my fuck, I piss. Someone would be like, oh, he said these words. I'm going to uh, clip it. He shit his pants. He, he said he shit his pants today. That's a lot more normal. <laughs> Hey, thanks for the clip. Yeah, you're welcome. Paranoid. <laughs> I mean, I'm fucking around. All right, where are we going? Market. Okay. Let's go. The market is busy with traders and stalls, a city in miniature. The market is not as large as those you encountered in Kare, but still it bustles with life. Even in Mampang, people need to go about their day. All right, let's go to the stalls. Most of the stalls are mundane, roughly made household goods and some trinkets. Despite the number of shoppers, there are in fact very few goods. But as you wander the stall, the stands, you do spot a weapons dealer flaunting his wares, and a bent-backed peddler with unusual items spread on a cloth. All right, weapons dealer or the peddler? I have a bunch of really great, I have great weapons right now. Get the trinkets, oh my God. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> you just chill. The peddler smiles as you approach. And he gestures across a motley collection of objects laid out on a blanket. There's chipped pottery, dull knives, and an empty picture frame. The man is not old, but a hard life has aged his looks. Junk. Refuse and memorabilia. Ah, all for the discerning customer. Where are you from? Shores of Lake Ekla, la la la, originally. But that was long ago. I took to wandering at a young age, and finished up here. Hmm. Not what I hoped for, really. Oh, I can sell stuff. Should I sell the gems? Why are you selling junk? He cackles, which ends in a tremendous coughing fit. <laughs> oh, you know another person's treasure, right? <laughs> 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 Some of these can be used for magic. I am no sorcerer, just a man with a good eye for value. I have learned that there are those out there who know a worthy purchase when they see it. <laughs> How did you come across these things? He points to a dried flower. That I found in the back pocket of a sleeping werewolf. 
This clue I won from a man in a contest of riddles. And this mirror I found dangling from a tree in an ancient swamp. Well, you are quite the adventurer. In my youth, I was many things. An excellent dancer, for instance. I fathered 47 children by that particular skill. He scratches his nose. You're going to buy anything? 47 children. Okay. Scrutinizing his assortment of junk, you can see few items that would be useful to you. 47 children by being a good dancer. <laughs> Did somebody, somebody said it, right? <laughs> yep. Somebody said puzzler. The puzzler. <laughs> in every state. In every country. Uh, what do I need? I kind of have everything I need. But maybe the mirror? You pick up the gold-backed mirror and admire yourself in it. The peddler smiles and hands over the mirror. It still may smell of swamp. It's 48 gold pieces. It is too expensive. You replace it on the rug. That is way too expensive. Why do I have to pay the amount of children he has in gold pieces? That's weird. What about the gems? Do you buy as well? I have gems for sale. Gems? <laughs> no, no point in me buying gems. What would happen if I put them out on my rug here, do you think? Would I make my money back? I don't think so. Who might take them? Yeah, try Hummingbird, the weapons dealer. He's nuts. He waves at his wares again, his previous grin returning. Okay. Um, so that, this is kind of unfortunate. Limberry potion? You lift the vial of potion carefully. Fresh, the peddler says. Or oh, fresh enough, anyway. Yours for 30 gold. Yeah, what is going on here? Why so much, you inquire? He shrugs. You seen any blimberries around here? You put it back. Okay, but this is all going to be too expensive. Yeah, a giant's tooth for 39 gold for one giant's tooth? No. What about the glue? Careful not to spill any. The peddler says as you lift the vial of glue. It's 24 gold pieces. You smile weakly. <laughs> you put it back down on the map. You decide to take your leave. The peddler wishes you safe travels with a wink. Okay, well that guy was not very helpful. The mirror probably was worth it, but let's go sell our gems. You approach the weapon stall. The trader is extraordinarily thin. He might disappear if he turned sideways. Welcome, friend. The army has procured most of my goods, but I have a few items left to sell for my original stock. Do you buy gemstones? I might, may I see? Perhaps a trade in kind? Is he going to run if I give these to him? Gems for a sword. I'm not letting him see them. Gems for a sword, you ask? How about this? He lifts a cutlass from the mat. It really is my finest blade. Strong, supple perfection. Where did you get it? It washed up in the fountain of the merchant's yard. To my very great surprise, the fountains are fed by rivers. I suppose something must have sunk somewhere once upon a time or else someone dropped it there by accident is that any good though i don't think i'm doing this he stole it off a corpse 
I mean, it is episode four. We don't have very many other places to spend this stuff. We are at the last episode. So, can't take it with us. So, I don't know if there's another opportunity to get rid of these gems. There might be. I don't remember. Stop buying so many swords. You're like Finn, but worse. I do have a lot of weapons. That's true. How many do we have? All right, if we have more than three, I won't buy it. One sword, one long sword, one assassin sword, one blessed hardwood spear, one chopping knife, one hefty arrow, one hewing axe, one chakram, and a silver chain. Ah, uh, this is more than three. This is way more than three. This is, this is a lot of weapons. You're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, all right, you're right, you're right, you're right. You're right. Okay, don't buy the sword. I don't want it. It's not what I want. You shake your head. That's the best blade I have. And I don't have enough gold on me to buy them outright. Sorry, friend. No deal. What do you have? Is there anything besides weapons? I mean, it is the weapons dealer. What do you have? I can see you're a seasoned one, so I won't waste your time with the lumps the common soldier gets stuck with. I have this broadsword, which I can let go for, say, fifteen gold pieces. And the best sword in my possession is this cutlass for six hundred gold pieces. Of course, at these prices you are practically robbing me, but then uh, so has everyone else in this place. Six hundred gold. It was a plus six cutlass. What? Your prices are too expensive. He shakes his head. This is the best you'll find in this fortress. I am nearly destitute thanks to Nylock. I cannot go any lower. But six hundred gold pieces? Somebody said go back. There is no going back. There are no more rewinds. We have to live with whatever happens here. This is no ordinary cutlass. The edge is unbreakable. The weight is perfect. The blade cannot be dropped or slipped from the hand. It cannot miss. This blade will make you all but invincible. Oh, spit in my... It's pretty good, see? He pauses to wipe spit from his mouth. That's such a gross sentence. Give me a better deal. Friend, this morning a beast man was so upset about the price he threatened me with the very sword I was trying to sell him. I can see you have a lot to learn about haggling in Mampang. You've seen enough. You nod to the traitor. Are you not from Mampang? There are safer trade routes, yes I know. But as a bold young man I heard that the Archmage was offering a fortune for weapons. The traitor waves his hand vaguely. Outfitting a new army or something, I am not so sure. Of course, once I got here, well... Hmm. What happened? He glances at a passing guard and lowers his voice. That snake Nylock would only pay me half and let me stuck on the wrong side of the wall. But what could I do? If I tried to leave, some bird man would have no doubt swooped down and... Hmm, quiet swoop down, and that would have been the end of it. At least I'm in a state to appreciate my poverty. But what can I do for you? Nylock. He makes a rude noise. Blech. The Archmage's official merchant. She handles all the trade for Mampang. Not us. And he gestures to the crowds. But the fortress. The guard encampment around the tower. I suppose she's now chiefly interested in outfitting the army. An army? Oh, oh indeed, uh, though I couldn't tell you who they're supposed to be fighting. Everyone outside the walls is now dead. Or so they say. Now, are you going to buy something, or are we to simply chatter like a Clatterman's grandmother? Farewell. Farewell, then. Do come back. Everyone is dead. Oh, no. This is getting close to your Sheldon impression. 
Well, my, my, my siblings were very interesting people. My sister, at dinner one time... Oh, shit, it is. All right, let's go to the tents. <laughs> Hold on. How close to Bugleberry is my Sheldon? There was a time... My sister, my sister. There was a time. There was a, there was a time. <laughs> or is it just the Joker? You'll never know. Omega Lel, stop. You can't write that and then say stop. All right, there are a few large tents set up, some and some stone buildings too. There's a hawker loudly proclaiming that mysteries and wonders await in his tent. In one corner, a long line of creatures queue outside of a low stone building. Fortune teller, the hawker. We were already here. Maybe I should just get a weapon. Fortune teller? We need food. Yes, we do. Let's go to Fortune Teller. I love that, by the way, though. I'm not sure if you can hear it. You join a long line of creatures outside the low stone building of the Fortune Teller. They're waiting with surprising patience. Well, let's talk to the creature ahead of me. The creature in front of you is a hobgoblin with long blonde hair and two protruding hooked teeth. Why is everyone waiting? You ask. You don't know? Why are you waiting here if you don't know? I saw the line. So you just joined? Well, I suppose when I first joined the line, it was for the same reason. But it seems so long ago now. How long have you been waiting? This time... A few hours, maybe. What do you mean, this time? Well, this isn't my first visit. No one visits wide, only once. Did you say wide? That's right. Fair and wide. The great seer of Lower Mampang. <laughs> See? You have heard of him. She pauses to scratch her chin. If you don't mind, I'd like to get back to waiting. I saw something over in chat and I have to say it because it was very funny. Um, somebody said wisdom teeth voice. Okay. Okay. I get it. <laughs> Come on, I'm acting here. All right, you, I'm going to wait. You <laughs> wait. A thin creature emerges from the building with a curious half-smile on his face. The next creature, a dwarf, enters. Should I push to the front? No, we're gonna wait. You continue waiting. Nothing happens. You wait. You continue to wait. And the dwarf emerges. She too has a curious half-smile on her face. A black elf goes inside next. You wait. You keep waiting. You wait. You wait a little longer. You damn it! I didn't mean to do that. I clicked the wrong thing. You step out of the line. The creatures who have joined behind you hurry forward to fill the space. And as they do so, you see it is the thin creature whom you saw coming out of the building. He has rejoined the line directly behind you. Return to the line. Shit. You go back to the line to rejoin. To your surprise, the creatures shuffle back to let you slot into your previous place. The hobgoblin you spoke to before even spares you a faint smile. What? Wait. The black elf emerges looking furious about something. A wood golem enters the building. You wait. The creatures in the line stir a little, but no one leaves the queue. Wait. You keep waiting. You keep waiting. The wood golem emerges looking furious about something. A goblin goes inside. We wait. 
You wait a little longer. The creature in the line stir. You wait. The goblin emerges, looking furious about something. The hobgoblin is next. Wait. You keep waiting. You keep waiting. You wait a little longer. The hobgoblin emerges, looking furious about something. A guard enters the building. You wait. Keep waiting. The guard emerges looking furious. A small moth child goes inside. Does this, does this matter? I forget if this matters. I don't remember. You wait. You wait. The creatures stir. You wait. The small moth child emerges looking furious. Everyone, okay, the first three people were happy. The next six people have been very, very mad. Hold on a second. Okay, a thin creature emerges from the building with a smile. Okay, a thin creature, smile, dwarf, smiled, black elf, angry. Everything has been angry. Okay, let's keep waiting. You wait a little longer. Keep waiting. The rat-faced orc emerges, looking furious about something. The, a one-legged dwarf enters the building. Okay. 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 A lanky guard goes inside. I feel like patience is going to pay off here. I don't remember what happens. Okay. Black Elf is next. Did I not get to go? Wood Golem enters the building? How come I'm not... I, I, I got passed in line like three times. A goblin goes inside. I've been... I've, some, I've been I'm, being, I'm being toted in Mario Kart. They're lapping me. You wait. Hobgoblin is... Alright. I don't know. Should I just go for it? No, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Alright, I need a poll. Because I, I actually... I don't know what to do. If it were me, I would have pushed to the front. But, I don't know. Yeah, well, I, we need a poll. I, I can get this one. It's, it's quick. Uh, which one? Uh, wait or push to front? Here we go. Which way are we going? I think I know where we're going. You need to wait your turn. Be polite. Be polite. <laughs> I'll wait all fucking day. That's a great comment. You know, that person wrote that. I'll wait all fucking day. And you know why they said that? Because they are ready. They've got, they got food in front of them. They've got a full drink. They're comfortable in their seat on the couch. Maybe they're ready. They're, they're, they're locked in for the long haul. Hey, I, I'll wait all fucking day. They take their phone, they put it on silent, they put it face down. I ain't taking any calls today. Alright, we're doing this one more time. Guard enters the building. Keep waiting. You keep waiting. A small moth child. I'm getting lapped again. Waiting again. Rat-faced orc. You wait a little longer. A large dwarf enters the building. 
Okay, push to the front. I have to do one more uh, cycle of this. 77% of you said to wait. That's a lot of people that said wait. Alright, I'm gonna click wait 10 more times, then I'm pushing to the front. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. It's definitely, I definitely have to push in front of somebody specific. And I don't know who. Should I push in front of my hobgoblin friend that I just made? Who should I push to the front in front of? Leave the line, Giga Chad. After all that. <laughs> you don't even ride the ride. I just get in line at Disney World. Wait till I'm about to get called to go into the cart and leave. I'm just pushing to the front. There's definitely a rhyme to this. There's definitely a, I've had this. Uh, I have to do this somehow. I don't know who I'm cutting in front of though. Cut in front of the moth child is what people are saying. Okay. You slip out of the line again, which closes up behind you immediately, and you walk towards the door of the building. A rat-faced orc stops you. What do you think you're doing? Get out of my way. I heard the teller's name is wide. I want to see if it's worth waiting for. I don't know. I wouldn't want to pick a rat-faced orc. I want to see if it's worth waiting for. Oh, it's worth it. This is my 13th time. <laughs> but how come I can't get in? I've been passed 10 times. You know, I heard the teller's name is wide. Is that right? So what? Get me in there! Alright, I'll get back. I'm gonna rejoin the line. I'm gonna get back in line. You wait. No, a rat-faced orc is next. No, I'm gonna... Okay, I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna cut every single person till we get the right one. Okay, here we go. Wait. Uh oh. Did I actually miss the opportunity? I can't push now? Really? Do I actually get to the whole thing screwed up now? Alright, 10 more clicks and I'm done. Wait! Talk to the thin creature. You turn to the thin creature. Didn't you just go in? Yes. So why are you in line again? Haven't you been inside yourself? No! Oh, you'll understand once you've been inside. Why it explains it better than I could. What did he tell you? The thin creature shakes his head. It's too personal to share. Besides, without knowing the answers to the previous questions, you wouldn't understand, I think. And what will you do with the answer? 
choose my next question. I'm getting close to my true calling now. I can feel it. How many times have you been in there? That was my 15th visit. Every time, the future becomes a little clearer. I see real potential now. I could become almost anything. I'm almost giddy with excitement, but I'll have to wait, of course. Please, I need to contemplate my next question. Why do I have to wait? Why can't I go in? Why are people just passing me? God damn it. You walk by the hawker who is plying her trade to the crowd. Shit. Examine the one, examine the wondrous stone of secrets. Marvel as it speaks, advises, and prophesies sizes. You approach the hawker, who points right at you. Now here is a discerning patron of the weird and wonderful. Will he enter and experience the mysteries that even our best magical knowledge cannot explain? You are a fraud. The tone of the accusation barely registers with the hawker. Oh, friend, I commend you on your skepticism. We should not believe the words of strangers. We should judge with our own eyes. And that is why, just for you, I will allow an intelligent traveler such as you to experience the stone for only two gold pieces. What is it? She puffs herself up. The Stone of Secrets is an incredibly rare artifact discovered deep within a lost cave many moons ago. It is the only stone in the world which can speak. It is not powered by magic, but a strange alien force unique to the old world. The greatest magicians of our age have examined it and walked away confounded. It's only two bucks. Where are you from? You ask. I'm a proud daughter of the Eighth Slum. But they say my family were once great travelers and traders, crossing the whole of the old world. Can you imagine such a journey, Trelawney? <laughs> no. She nods. Indeed, it is but a journey beyond all imagining, especially for one without if I might say, the traveler's blood. But the tales my stone could tell you now. Hmm. Rubbing the stone. I will pay. You pay the fee and the hawker beams, her gaze already slipping past you. Here is a brave soul who has chosen to embrace the mystery and wonder. Who will follow him? It's two bucks, whatever. If I walk through here and it was a jump scare... I'd be like, it was two gold. I don't even care. <laughs> Inside the tent is a dim and cramped. It's very like that. A large stack of boxes sits to one side, a cloth draped over them. Other curiosities, no doubt, that the hawker has shelved in favor of the more profitable stone. Church the box. Let's just, let's do it. You begin to rifle through the boxes when suddenly you are stopped short. Then a voice booms through the tent. I don't know who this is, so it's going to be pretty generic. Analander! A familiar voice. The voice is familiar, but quite impossible. It is the booming tone of Shadrach, the hermit from the Backlands. This must be a trick. Alas, no trick, replies the voice happily. A fairly poor outcome for me, I'll warrant, but no trick. Shadrach? Yes, yes, it's I. It is good to see you again. <laughs> After a fashion, at least. What happened? I bound a piece of my spirit to this rock. A desperate move. Why? The Archmage's assassins found my cave. I was staked outside on a cross. My body is still there, wasting away. I was able to project a fragment of myself into this stone. Another into a tree. You will not last long in there. True. 
I only saved a small portion of my mind, and the magic binding me to the stone is tenuous. Can I aid you? No. It is best you put me out of your mind. Your own task is all that matters. Can you help me? I only hope I can help. I am but a rock. The stone dulls in color a touch, as though it sighed. <laughs> but all I have learned of Manpang has made my heart heavier. <laughs> all right, what do we, we got to get some questions answered here. Beat the Archmage to death with the Soul Rock. Hey. Okay. can make that happen. Okay. What secrets does Manpang hold, do you ask? The greatest secret are the vaults of Manpang, buried somewhere beneath the city. They hold the treasure of the fortress, but they are heavily guarded. Uh, what do you know about these vaults? The stone would shake its head if it had a head to shake. Nothing. But the crown will not be in any vault. It is too precious for that. How do I reach the Archmage? You must enter the Sorcerer's Spike. But its doors have never opened. They were made by the necromancer Throben, locked in three ways and then sealed in a fourth. The last seal was a bind that required he took his life. But the only power that can defeat the crown lies behind those doors. The rock rattles and then falls still for a time. I am sorry, Annalander. I lack the strength to continue speaking. My body has already failed. And my spirit cannot stay anchored to this rock forever. Keep your wits about you. And know that. I am proud. The rock stills as Shadrach's voice fades. Shadrach, what the heck? Master class actor. <laughs> Acting. He does not care. All he cares about is acting. He doesn't even care. He's not even sad. He just wants to be just acting. To be fair, I did finish that and was like acting. So I, I understand the criticism. Can you act like you care? Oh, all right. Throwing me a curveball there, okay. Yeah. That's a tough one. Let's see if I can do that. That's a hard roll. That's quite a roll. I have to, like, care? Okay, goodness. That's gonna be hard. Alright. Outside the tent, the hawker claps you on the shoulder. Well, friend, did the stone unlock the mysteries of the universe for you? Did it dazzle your senses? Delight your spirit? Indeed. You're exploiting that creature. <laughs> but he's dead, so I don't know. Should I just walk? Walk away. You walk away without a word. All right, am I getting that weapon? I think I have one more opportunity to get it. You return to the stalls, noisy with the sounds of aggressive haggling. Nearby, a fight breaks out over the price of cloth, but there's nothing more to be bought. Is there anything else that I missed? No opportunity to go this way. Let me check. There is not. All right, so we, gotta, we have to go back to the square. You head away from the maze of stalls and shops. Which way now? All right. We got another opportunity. There is the west side, which I'm imagining takes us through here. Down here. I'll give you a bigger picture so you can see again. Are we staying west? 
There's also this here. There's this here. There's all this over on the eastern side. And there's actually the fortress itself, which is here. Are we going to go... Uh, I'm going to make it pretty general. I can run the pull, too. It's probably just way easier. Because I'll just do it very, very quickly. Uh, west. North or east. Where do you want to go? Yeah, for more complicated polls that require a sentence or so for each answer, or at least a few words, and yeah. But in like the 10 seconds of stream delay it takes to communicate it, I think it's easy for me just to write it. <laughs> uh, it's kind of... Could go either way. He's on the road to retirement, and he learned how to do polls. I've also been very on time since uh, talking about that. <laughs> Good job, Peepaw. All right, we're going west. We're going to stay on this side. You hit him with the pee paw? What? What? You hit the dude with pee paw. You hit him with pee paw? <laughs> is that bad? I don't know. Is that like bad? All right, here we go. An old... Beggar woman lounges against a well nearby, watching people come and go from the market. A wider road leads west into a rundown area of the city. Clouds rumble as they roll across the dimming sky. Uh, the beggar. The road. Let's go to the beggar. You walk over to the well where an old woman, little more than a bundle of rags, sits. She does not look at you as you approach. Look at the woman. Her face is obscured by a shapeless hood. She rarely acknowledges anyone, not even holding out her hand for alms. Uh. Greet her. Greetings, old woman. You declare. Uh, I, I think I remember this one. I remember this. This is this is this is a very old footage. Those that know, they know. She looks moldy. <laughs> I think back in 2016, this clip was like, the f I think the first time that a clip on the channel really like, whoa, people people watched it. There's a, wait, a lot of views on that clip. I remember that was kind of a, like, holy shit, there's a, a lot of views on this clip. 2016? All right, but anyways, we can be nostalgic all we want. Let's continue. He's reminiscing. Her voice when she speaks is raspy, barely above a whisper. And her eyes, when they meet yours, are a smooth, glossy black. There you are, my love. Found you now. Spare an old blind woman a coin. Left by a crust of bread, perhaps. Here, you can have a coin. You toss a gold coin into her lap, and she rocks back and forth, grinning. Oh, love. You have made Javid a happier woman. Bless you for helping me live out my last days. <laughs> now, love, anything else for an old blind woman? Who are you? Well, now, my love, most call me 
Hergophilia. But you can call me Javin. It is my prettier name. And now you are a beggar. I was a healer before. But now, yes, now I beg. I sit here every day with little to pass the time with the tormenting I receive from the Sightmasters. Sightmasters here in Mang Pang? Surely she must be mistaken. There can be no Sightmasters here, you assure her. Know about them, do you? <clears throat> Next you'll be Tell me you're the Anilander you are. I am. Mm. And fresh-faced young beauty am I. <laughs> Those sight masters. They're like a pox on me. One lacking sight is a source of much curiosity to them. Half of them want to kill me and half of them are in love with me. And those halves aren't entirely separate halves. The ones from my homeland were honorable. These may be the outcasts then. It is hard to say. What happened to your eyes? Well, you don't waste time with pleasantries, do you? But I'll tell you my tale. I was called on by the Archmage himself to examine one of his creation. The Archmage makes creatures, you see, of all mixtures and kinds. This one was a mucousy, slimy sort of a thing called a mucolatic, if I remember. A miserable thing born totally without fear. They are almost deaf and speak only in whisper. Why does the Archmage make such creatures? Why does the Archmage do anything? Why does he sleep for a hundred years and wake up to... Measure the positions of the stars. If I knew the workings of his mind, I would have twisted them to my own end years ago, but I don't. <clears throat> you. What a lovely chat. I so rarely get to talk these days, love. Come back any time. Especially if you slay one of the sight masters. <laughs> like this. I have killed a sight master, you lie. Hmm. You're a silver tongued one, aren't you? Know all the right things to say, but it's no good. I'm not stupid. I got sight. You leave the woman huddled by the wall, the well. Why would you lie? I don't know. Didn't I? Oh, one died. No, no, no. One died in front of me. That doesn't count. She saw through your lie. Why are you taking credit for that? Well, I don't want to take credit for it. I just... I don't know. You've returned to the west side of the square. Javine appears to go back to sleep. A wider road leads west into a rundown area of the city. The sun is almost set, and the sky has turned a deep purple. It'll be night soon. All right, we're going this way. You walk west out of the square, following a wide road. It passes by a larger gate. Another night begins. You should try to find a place to sleep, especially on an empty stomach. Before you is a stone facade that stretches the length of the street. It seems to be closed for the night. Oh, it's nighttime. Arched windows are placed evenly, though several panes are missing. Worn steps lead to a door that is rather small for such a large building, but the doors are sealed fast for the night. Um, should I just sleep out here? You should just read a book at this point. Uh, that is ex I think that is exactly what we're doing. Sorcery is a book. It has been, uh, its pages have been ported to a digital, but it, it is a, it's a digital book. That's what we're doing. You spend so much time waiting in line. 
Uh, I'm gonna... I'm gonna keep going. I feel like that's not a safe place to go. The road curves along the edge of a tall stone wall, eventually reaching a low metal door. The moon moves slowly across the dark sky. Alright, we got a door. The door is made of thin strips of metal riveted together, with a few gaps and holes between the plates. Peering through the holes, you make out a sea of waving grass stalks, tall and clearly half-wild. It's going. You push at the door and are surprised to find it is not locked. It is, however, heavy enough that it swings shut when you release it. You had better sleep when you can find somewhere safe next. Oh shit, wait, that was for this. I don't think we sleep in a field. Remember, unironically, you're the type of person to close your eyes while shooting a gun so the noise doesn't hurt your ears. You don't know- you don't know anything about me. <laughs> like, come on, dude. Like, well, how do you- why would you even- how do you even know that? That was a deep cut. You don't like the sound of tape, that's how we know. Alright. Me not enjoying the sound. <laughs> We're going in the field. That touched a nerve. Yeah, because you know why? Because I don't have a rebuttal. But you all know that I have one. I just can't give one. I can't give a rebuttal. Because, like, how do I prove that? I could tell you it's not true. How do I prove that? That Me acknowledging that person's criticism means I have to... As, I, how do I prove that person wrong? It's a no-win scenario for me. I have to dodge the axe. I do. I gotta dodge that axe. <laughs> I have to go to a shooting range? What, to prove that I don't close my eyes when firing a firearm? Is that That's that important to you all? That is this important. I have to prove it. I don't want to do that. I, I don't want to go to, like, a shooting range. I'll, all right, I'll write it down. Just because I wrote it down doesn't mean I'm going to do it. It just means I'm going to think about it. I'm just going to write it down. It's never happening. But just know that you've it's made it past the barrier of I wrote it down. Okay. Okay. You slip under the archway into a wide field of wheatgrass. Each stalk is taller than you stand. The heavy door slams shut behind you. That's not good. You look over the door. It is solid, but seems in good repair, as though used fairly frequently. It does not appear to be locked. Uh, I'm just, I'm just going to move through the grass. And I, I, inevitably, I want to be here. You walk on through the long grass. Then something large slithers over your foot. Hopping back, you see a large snake disappear into the wheat. No, back away. You back away from the snake. The stalks close around you. Where did it go? I can make it. Why did you emphasize large so heavily? Because it was in, um, it was like bolded. It was like in a italics. You stride onwards through the field of wheat. The spire stands in front of you as high as an ancient tree, but impossibly thin. How can it stay upright? At the base is an opening just large enough to enter. Look up. Let's see. The spire is built from tiny stacked stones. 
into a low, pointed tower. It is clearly old and somewhat poorly maintained. There's a low door at its base, though it hardly seems large enough for a person to enter. You could venture inside the dim space within the narrow spire. It should provide a safe place to sleep. Okay. Well, we're going in. Weak moonlight filters in from above, but the ceiling is shrouded from view. There is no floor, but the grass underfoot is pale and short. At the center of the room is a small shrine, a cut stump of wood on which stands a tiny clay idol. I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to get smushed. Search the space. You investigate around the shrine, but find nothing except a rotten ladder bolted to one wall. Most of its rungs missing. Uh, what about the shrine? You approach the shrine, a hefty tree stump. It has been carried here and carefully cut and sanded. The idol on top is unpainted clay. Pray at the shrine. Ooh. What's the idol? The idol is small enough that you need to squat to see it. It is roughly made with pits and defects. It is human-shaped, clutching a sword that points towards the ground. It lacks a face and is unnaturally cold to the touch, as though it drank your warmth. Uh, uh, it's either pray and get a new god, or maybe this is not a good thing. Uh, pray, leave alone, destroy. Which one? Because I really don't. I really don't know. Is it going to be that god of gods asshole again? This sounds like an evil god. I don't remember. Could be. What gods are left? Um, I think there's a few here in the fourth game. All right, well, it's going to be pray. All right, pray at the shrine. Let's go. You kneel down to pray at the shrine. Your mind empties and you hear whispering from far below. The earth shifts slightly as the empty heavens recoils from the presence in the narrow room. Words are coming unbidden to your mind. Whisper the words. You murmur the words in your mind and they grow thicker and faster, turning from trickle to torrent. There are prayers for suffering, for safety, for rain and sun and dry lands. There are words for a ruined world and the words for a breaking bud. There are tumbling seasons and birds in flight and stars in the sky. The spire in which you stand seems to extend in height as though its tip touched the sky and its base lay at the center of the world. Keep going. You murmur onwards, but despite the extent of the space your prayers have created, no voice enters it. No voice replies. This place is empty. Your words dry up, spent, as the earth shifts again. The spire is once more silent. In its place, there is nothing, only silence. Your maximum stamina has increased. 24. Now we go to sleep. This place seems safe enough. You lie down and gratefully close your eyes. But your sleep is not without interruption. In the dead of night, you are stirred by a bright light playing over your eyes. Look. You lift your eyelids a crack to see a brilliant bright glow radiating from the idol on the altar. It pulses like a breath. 
Your breath clouds in front of your face. When did it become so cold? I feel like we keep watching. You watch, and a worshiper arrives. A hunched figure scuttles into the chamber to crouch before the idol. They have not noticed you, or else you are in you are unimportant to them. They're whispering to the idol, voice soft and pleading. Excuse me. Uh I think I'm just gonna lie still. You wait, regulating your breathing to appear asleep. The figure continues to whisper at the idol, their words becoming increasingly frantic. They stop mid-sentence, holding back a sob. After a long pause, they turn away from the altar, struggling to their feet. Greet the figure. You open your eyes as the figure passes the end of where you lie. Greetings. The figure gasps. And Lender, you are awake? Uh, ching! That's not me. You know me? You know me? You ask, your voice is calm in the gentle darkness of the spire. The figure chokes a sob. <laughs> I have always loved you. How could I not recognize you now? Does the figure lie? You cannot see the eyes below the cowl. But if you could, they, you, they would be sobbing. Uh, what trick is this? You ask suspiciously. The figure shakes its head. No trick. I cannot control my heart. I was made to love you. Come come here where I, come over here where I can see you. I yearn for you, the creature replies plaintively. But I love you too much to do what I was made to do. A single tear catches the light as it rolls down the figure's cheek. Why are you crying? Like, who, who are you? Oh, Anna Lander, I prayed for a vision of you. But what I was told... Oh! Tell me! You will die here in Mampang. Oh! Oh! It's awful! Before you ever reach the great doors of Throben, you will die. Get out while you can. The figure <laughs> is turning into Dawn Knots. The figure is shaking its head sadly. Oh, you will die over and over and over again. With that, the figure rushes out into the night, sobbing and wailing as though their heart were breaking. The remainder of the night passes in uneasy sleep. You sleep and you do not dream. Who is this person? <laughs> Who the fuck was this person? You gained some max stamina, lost some gold, and searched the wheat fields, and you spoke to Shadrach's stone. The Archmage is unaware of you still. That was not Flanker, though. No. Yeah, you hurry to your feet, let's get on top of the ladder. You attempt to scale the ladder, but there are too few handholds, and the ladder is far too old to be of any use. Even if there was anything worth climbing up to, you leave the spire. The sun breaks over the eastern wall. I wonder how differently that can play out. Hmm. Well, I'm going to go this way. I'm curious about this. You pace on through the tall, swaying stems. Stalks break and crack around you as you walk. Let's go to the ruins. What are your thoughts on banana bread? It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's fantastic. I think it's great. I don't like bananas, but I like banana bread. It's so funny because a regular banana... I would put on like B or C tier, 
but everything made with banana is S. Banana bread, S. Banana pudding, ban banana cream pie, S. S. Regular banana the fruit? It's I it's a B or an A. It's a B. But I love all the things you make with banana more than the actual fruit. Blue, uh, banana muffins. Oh yeah. That's S tier. It's A at least. Um, where did I put it when I did the fruit tier list like three years ago? I think I put it pretty high. I think it was like A or S. It was C. Bananas that are about to turn brown are S tier. Oh yeah. That's the a ripe banana is the best thing to put in a smoothie. Okay, let's keep going. All right, the grass here is strewn with rubble and rocks, which make the going difficult. The blocks have fallen from the outer wall, and a sheer drop beckons to the west. Search the stones. You search through and around the stones. Eventually, you come across something, a human arm bone underneath one large block. Presumably, this is unfortunate. It was standing below the wall when it fell. Uh, move back from the edge. I'm not messing with that. I guess I could jump off. You walk on through the field of wheat. Um, is anything out here? I'm going to check. I feel like there probably is. You stride onwards through the tall, swaying stems, then suddenly you stop. You have seen a prone form lying in the grass up ahead. Somebody's proning, looking at me. Have you ever had an unripe avocado? Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 always a painful experience. When you like, is it ready? You open it. Fuck. It's not. Uh I'm gonna read this thing's mind. You gotta become an avocado whisperer. It's not ready. That's funny. If I pick an avocado, it's awful. Polly picks an avocado, it's great. I can't do it. I can't do it. I, every time I've tried. Avocado salsa tastes like radioactive waste. <laughs> no, it, it does not. What he no, what? I'm seeing a lot of trues right now, and I have to disagree. Wait, what do you mean? Avocado salsa? You mean guacamole? You talking about guacamole? You mean like salsa that's what do you mean? Guacamole's great. I you know what? I didn't really like guacamole until like five years ago. I like a chunky guacamole. I don't like smooth guacamole, it's too pasty. But big chunky avocados in the guac? That's where you got me. Now I'm there. I'm excited. What would you name your first child? Um, Bill. Okay, you weave the spell pulling on the cloth, let's see. Thoughts rise up from the sleeping figure. It is dreaming of scratching its nose. Okay, this is person's asleep. Poor kid. What? What? What's wrong with Bill? You got a problem with Bill? You got a problem with Bill? The name Bill? How many Bills in here just got fucking pissed at you? How many? How many? How many Williams are here right now that are like, excuse me? Why are they truing this? Yeah. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> Bill is an epic name. Yeah, thanks. Okay. We're not going to talk about food. And we're not we're not going to talk about Bill. We're not going to talk about Bill or food. We're going to play sorcery, okay? Yeah, 
you have another kid gonna be Ted, Bill and Ted. Can I write? Can I write it now? Can I write it? Okay, I, okay that's my reaction. You know what I mean? Like that's my. You guys do it. I'm gonna do it now. Okay, let's go. Okay, you weave the spell. Okay, the sleeping. Let's keep listening. You keep listening. The dream intensifies. It is now cleaning the inside of its ear and gently stroking across the top of its head. Both actions are giving the creature ecstatic pleasure. <laughs> you remove the skull cap, feeling somewhat sullied, and the spell fades. What is going on? Okay. The figure is a strange creature with long, flat-bladed arms. A little like the curious farmers you saw in the fields of Lorakari. The figure is fast asleep. An empty wine skin by its side. Should I go up and wake the figure? I'm waking him up. You shake the figure on the shoulder until it opens its eyes. Instead of yawning, it lets out a series of small chirps. <laughs> You're right! <laughs> I should probably get back to work! Was that a bird? Or a... An ape? Who knows? You look over the creature and it stares back at you. Large teeth barred in what might be a smile. Its eyes are glossy like an insect's, and you see a harsh reflection of yourself in them. Who are you? What an odd question! I'm me! As you speak, the creature idly shaves off some grass with a blade. Where are you from? Are you natural? Do you live in this field? Do you live here? I usually sleep here, uh, but sometimes I sleep closer to the market where I get some food. Are you given a wage? You ask, puzzled. A woman gives me apples and water in exchange for my wheat. This conversation is oddly like talking to a plant. Are you from here? Uh, I have always lived in this field. What a coincidence! Me too! The creature beams up and sits up. Oh, it's so nice to sit with a human. Most avoid the fields or spit at me and call me a name. Now, uh, wh what is it? What is it? Freak mutant friend. Friend? Friend. I've never heard that word before. And he picks his nose with the blade tip. I think the Archmage made you. Perhaps it is a jest. Has the Archmage been selling your type to Kare? Uh, we'll go to the middle. Perhaps it is it is a jest. They usually don't stay around long enough for me to find out, but they are laughing as they say it. The creature bows its head to you. Not every day I get to spend time with a with a human. Few come by here and most ignore me. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, could we play a game of swindle stones or a drink? How about a drink? Swindle stones? It's been a while since we played Swindle Stones. The farmer counts out four dice each and takes first bid. Okay, so four each. Okay, I gotta remember everything about this game. Where do you live? Near the market? Okay, so I have to... I'm gonna say use one. That means you have one. Okay, then let's go with... Three ones. No. If he calls that, it's going to be real. Should I say four ones? There are four, four ones. What do you think about that? Call it. Good. You have one. Call it. You didn't even have... What? I got swindled. Get three twos. 
And he's calling out ones. That's fine. How is he rolling the dice? It's a good question. Okay. There is... Uh, there are... Two twos. There are three ones? Shit, that might be accurate. Do I dare say four? Should I say three? No. I think he's got me again. Fuck. He's got me again. I'm rusty. I haven't played in like a year. Two twos. Fuck. How? He, he, okay. This, can he see? How can he see mine? That's He keeps getting the ones that I have. What about two fives? Or two fours? All right. If you have one five, then I get it. I mean, one four. What? How do you not have one? This, this guy's crazy at this game. I can't even rewind. I got screwed so bad. Me having three ones and him having three twos, and he says there are he's, he's calling out ones in the beginning. That fucked up the whole thing. I'm just gonna make it up. I have one one, two twos. Okay, you have to have those. So should I just call him? That means he has to have two twos. Do I dare tell? No. I have to call it. I have to. Because he's, 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 he's making this up or, I mean, we lose anyways. Yeah, call it out. Of course. He, this guy's hands have been fucking disgusting, by the way. These are disgusting hands to get. Just absolutely disgusting hands. Let's play again. Okay, that's a, this is good. There are two twos. Really? You think there are? I think there are three twos. Call it. Four twos. Is he lying again? He's lying again. You don't have two. What the fuck? Yeah, but if I said five twos, he would call it and I would lose anyways. Because it, it, he knows. Let's go with two of these. Just two, What about just two ones? Something I don't have. Two ones. Th uh, is he cheating? I think he's cheating. This guy's cheating. He's cheating. He's gotten this... He, he's known what I've had in my hand every time. He's cheating. Okay. I'm going to say there are four of those. Because I don't know why you would say that if you didn't think you had at least two of them. Call it. What the fuck? That means you have th you have almost three fours are in your hand. No. This is this game. Is he's che he's cheating. See, look, he's got how why can he see what I, he knows what I have? All right, I'm going three. No, I'm you know what. Fuck you. Four twos. Oh, you think there are five twos? There are not. Sorry. Here comes the comeback. 
You need to relax. It's just a game. Stick to talking about fruits. You're not very good at this. Um, I'm, hey, I'm a little rusty. I'm doing fine. All right, this is good. This is good. This is huge. This is a huge deal. If I start out with two threes, okay, I'm going to say two threes. And it's going to ruin everything because now he's going to say three threes. Hey, he's cheating. There are two ones, because I have one of them. Hmm. Uh, this is fucked up. I'm sorry. This is the this is like the most ridiculous Rundle Stones I've ever played. This is actually cheating. Game over! The farmer shrugs. It is rather hard for me to roll, you see, but I do enjoy it. But another? How about one, one? Two twos. Three ones. Oh, you piece of shit. Okay, he he probably has two. I don't think I can call him on that. I'm going to say there are th three threes. I have two. He just needs one. Reveal it. You definitely have one. Show your hand. Two threes. Three twos. He knows what I have. He's cheating. He's literally cheating. You bad at bluffing? This isn't a real guy. I can't bluff a fake person. He's got computer knowledge in here of him cheating. I'm just gonna say something crazy. I mean, I'm, I'm just gonna call it because it's very high that he has two twos, but what am I gonna do? Yeah, got two twos and two ones. One, okay. There are two of those. I'll say three. He, he's cheating. I've I, I've played this game a thousand times. This guy's not. This is he's cheating. Hey, watch this. Watch this. I'm gonna and he's gonna be like, oh, hey, by the way, thanks for uh, showing me all those twos. And I'm gonna get the opportunity to shoot a lightning bolt at his head. I, th I'm just telling you what the game is gonna do for us. It's gonna. That's what's gonna be presented to us. Uh, there, are, uh, there are two ones. Two twos. Get out of here with this shit. Get out of here with this. I'm gonna try one more time. Oh, I do love this. He's probably stealing shit from me while he cheats. I don't even care because I have to beat the cheater. I have to beat the cheater. Two twos. Yeah, I wonder why. You know what? Let's go. Let's just go with four twos. Four twos. What are you going to do about it? Okay. Well, you, you're a liar. This motherfucker, I swear to God. How about just one? One? One five. Oh, one four. Two fours. Three threes. 
You might have one. Oh! Okay. So that means you have two. But I don't think you do. I mean, you probably have two. He gets two of these every time, and then he, he always calls. He always says, hey, what about the exact thing that you have? Yeah, all right, all right, uh, I am, all right. I'm zapping this guy. I don't care what I get from it. Three twos. Yeah, because cause you're screwing me over. I can't win like this. Two twos. All right, how about three twos? I mean, three ones. Let me guess, he's gonna have one this time. Oh, when you, can, when you can't, when you can only mess with one die, it's not so easy, is it? Well, okay, if you, you have one, uh, one, all right. So let's go with two. I'll throw this right back at you, let's go. Okay. Somehow I'm clawing this back. Uh, okay, there's one, one. Two, okay, you have to have two fours, which is, there's no way. Oh my god. Cheating. The farmer offers you an apple as a token of appreciation. The creature offers you a dark purple drink, which it insists is simply water. It smells awful. Why would I drink this? You take a drink. It tastes like the sewers beneath Kare, but afterwards you feel strangely refreshed. I am very careful about what I drink. No ale or strange potions. Only pure water for me. You elect to keep going. The farming creature nods to you, then scurries away across the grass. The air stirs a little, cold, but fresh. Fuck that guy. You pace on through the long grass, the stalks nearby shiver, and then the snake you saw earlier bursts up. You twist away as it rears up and goes for your neck, and your blade is out before it can disappear again, and you track it with hawk eyes. But you have fought larger serpents than this one. <gasps> I'm gonna burp. Uh, can I talk? You always try the talk, right? Uh, it's wrap, right? Sharpen. Um, Zap is probably going to light the whole field on fire, which I don't want to do. Ooh. Law. Control non-intelligent creatures. Is a snake smart? Find out. Insulting the stars, you bind the magic. The creature stops in its track. Its will now bent to yours. Um, should I kill it? I'm going to send it away. In a moment of conscience, you send the creature away. Your grip on its mind fades as it escapes into the grass. The grass, the grass waves and wafts around your feet. This could be a bucolic paradise if it wasn't for the looming ghoul of the sorcerer's spike to the east. A few clouds drift across the sky. Um, should I just keep going? You move onwards through the field of wheat. You almost trip over a half-rotten tree stump, lost in the long grasses. A low murmuring comes from inside the ancient wood. Somebody in the tree? 
You squat down and peer at the stump. A bee crawls from a crack in the wood and takes off into the air as you watch. Um, why would I split open the beehive? Fucking starlight kid, bucolic kid. What? Do it for science? With your sword, you pry open a section of the wood, and a hundred bees spill out in a sudden angry swarm. They whip around in furious clouds, searching for their attacker. Uh, <laughs> run from bees. I'm the Ark Mage of Mampang. I know there's an assassin to come and get me. I know he's tracking through the universe to find me. Who's that out there in the in the uh, in the weeds out there in the wheat? Is that Frank out there? No, who's that? You're being swarmed by bees. That's my attacker. Oh, okay. I'm in deep trouble. I think I'll be fine. In fact, I'm going to keep the windows open. Um, I was going to look in the trunk. You swat away the swarm as best you can to look inside the trunk, where you can see a huge supply of beeswax. The bees seize their chance to surround you. You fall, but stagger quickly back to your feet. The stings are oversized, like the plants here, and you feel the poison causing stiffness and rictus in your body. You must keep moving. Reach in to get some beeswax. You scoop out several handfuls of beeswax, enough for six or seven spell castings. But the slightest hesitancy is enough for the bees to catch you. You gasp with pain. There is no time to waste. Run. The bees are right behind you. You open your arms to cast a spell and the bees attack. You fall, but scramble quickly to your feet. You must keep moving. Uh-oh. I have to go this way. You run forward, the swarm hot on your heels. Then the swarm of bees catches you, stinging viciously. You gasp and bat at them furiously. You wail with pain. You cannot take much more of this. There is no time to waste. The bees do not slow or stop as you rush forward. You stand in the shadow of the inner wall by a heavy metal door. The door is closed. Open the door. Oh, I'm dead. You try for the door and find it open, but stiff. The bees reach you. The impact of a hundred stings is too much for you. You succumb to the sound of a hundred furious bees. But then, after some time, you awaken. The sun disappears heading towards the horizon. You ache all over. Where am I? You lift your head. You're lying on a pallet. Be careful. You were very badly wounded before we carried you here. Who are you? We're a friendly order. Rest now. The figure bows its head and slips you away. You pass out once more. Night has fallen. You need to rest, especially on an empty stomach. More time passes. How long have you been here? Get up. You struggle to your feet. You are in a monastery, it would seem, in a dormitory. You make your way slowly, staggering up a short flight of stairs. Oh, I'm sorry. I, uh, I thought we were in the larder. I thought we were that other person. Sorry about that. Changing voice now. Sorry about that. Your footsteps echo on the cool stone floor. As you emerge into a wide hall, pews line one side, and an altar is in the corner. Let's rest. You take a moment to rest on one of the stone benches. It is a peaceful spot, perhaps the most peaceful in all of Mampang. All is quiet in the chamber. You could explore the monastery further, or go out into the streets. I think we're going to explore. Uh, how about back in the dormitory? So I didn't die, that's cool. You head down a short flight of steps into the dormitories, unseen. 
you're back in the dormitory where you nursed back to life after your encounter with the bees. The cots are filled with sleeping bodies. Should I go back to sleep? Look at the monk's habits. One of the habits looks to be your size. It has a large hood which will hide your face well. Put it on. You gather up the monk's concealing habit and quickly pull it on. Disguise. You will now pass as a monk. A sense of great calm descends upon you. Sleep. Trusting that your habit will keep you out of trouble, you stretch out on a berth. Laying your pack down, you try to stretch out under your habit despite the uncomfortable floor. You've not eaten today, but I do have food. How? Oh, the apple! That's right. I forgot. Taking the apple from your pack, you fill your empty stomach and try not to think about what you will eat tomorrow. Then you lie back and try to forget your troubles. You feel quite safe and you do not dream. All right, we're back. We're good. I was going to kill that guy, too. Thanks for the apple. You entered the monastery of Effie the Fortuitous. Disguised yourself as a monk and found no new clues. Still unaware. Which is good. You wake refreshed. Then sit bolt upright as you find six monks sitting around the bed, watching you intently. As your eyes open, one punches the air and the other shakes their heads. They exchange a few coins, nod to you, and then move away. With slow, solemn paces, you make your way back up to the steps. They're betting on if I was going to wake up, I think. Oh, I don't want to spoil anything, but I like this is this is a good part of the game. You head back to the main chamber. Chanting fills the space. Listen to the singing. You pause for a while to listen to the singing. It is a strange tune. Restless. Sometimes harmonious, but at other times horrifically atonal. It is as though all the singers are singing their own songs, letting them coincide or conflict as luck would have it. The effect is rather unsettling and not especially pleasant. Monks move this way and that about their business. It's time to make a choice on where you will go. Let's go on the altar. You move closer to the altar and the pews. Some kind of service is going on. Monks are clustered in groups, chanting in a slurring monotone. A monk in bright red robes, the abbot, stands with arms outstretched. Let's watch the service. You stand and watch the service. The chanting is odd. A droning buzz lacking discernible phrases. You catch snatches of what might be words, but they sound like a strange imitation of language. Some monks are jovial, whispering to each other and jostling, but others are solemn. Should we go back to bed? Snooze. <laughs> I'm going back to sleep. Uh, create the illusion of worship. I know you wrote so funny in all caps. I know. I know. I'm not going to do it. I could teleport. Should I just cause everybody to go to sleep? It's not that I don't understand the language. They're all just talking over each other. <clears throat> um... Should I just make six of me? I'm making six of me. You gather the stars into your design around you, and five clones step out from behind you, forming a semicircle. The six of you sit side by side quietly. See how our numbers have swelled, the abbot declares as he looks around the room. The abbot, his bright habit distinguishing him, stands placidly at the front of the room. The altar near him is covered in bronze, its top battered and pitted. Atop is a small bowl and a set of metal dice. The chanting peters out, and the abbot smiles. 
Brothers and sisters, we give thanks to Effie. We meditate on the changes and chances that fill our lives. We give ourselves over to the dice roll, to the risk, and let her nudge as she sees fit. He gestures to a monk who approaches the altar. Sister, it is your day to roll. Wait. A monk approaches, grasps the dice, and then tosses them across the altar with a clang. The abbot considers the dice and tuts. No luck for you. Half rations for a day. Think upon this chance. Snooze. There is a long stretch of chanting, and then the service comes to an end. The monks file out towards the gardens or linger by the altar. The echoes die away. The monks stand and file away. It's a gambler's den. You step back to the doors once more. One by one, your clones vanish. So we just gassed that guy up. That's all we did. That, that guy thought they added six new people. Okay. Behind you, the ceremony comes to an end and monks file past into the courtyard. The abbot himself emerges from the room in quiet discussion with a few senior monks. Let's go talk to the abbot. You catch the abbot's sleeve. Your head is bowed under your cowl, but he still stops you. And what do you think you're doing? He demands. Uh, contemplating. It's not what you think. Mother, look over there. Contemplating. You reply. Is that so? Contemplating what? Sound of my footsteps. The rhythm of my breathing. The cracks of the stone. All right, which one of these is gambling? Which one of these has a range? Probably cracks, right? Like how many cracks will happen in the, I feel like it's probably stone. The cracks of the stone. Mm. They are indeed profound. But, and he wags a finger. You cannot fool me so easily. Hmm. Should you not be polishing the steps, Noviet? He turns you gently about by the shoulders, explaining a few points about the laziness of the younger orders. The abbot deposits you in the courtyard. Effie, be with you, he murmurs before moving away. No. Shoot. This place seems rather busy for a monastery. Monks and citizens crowd around long tables, and a commotion is coming from a crowd to one side. Wide doors lead deeper into the monastery itself. Small iron-lined windows dot the walls, allowing a little light. What else can I do in here? I think you can actually... I think you can do more gambling. Let's do it. Uh, resurrect the dead. Who's dead in here? That's going to consume the holy water, though. Can see the future in here. There are no animals in here. Do it? I don't think I want to do it. Mm, I think I'm going to use diplomacy. Most of Effie's monks are gambling or betting in one way or another. One stands on one leg while another counts seconds. Opposite, two monks stand under a tree, guessing when a particular leaf will fall. Along a far wall surrounded by many spectators is an intricate race course for rats. Let's go. The rattle of dice and the grumble of betting comes from a side chamber. The rat run, the dice chamber, or the hall. Alright, let's go to rat run. You walk up to the rat course. 
elbowing your way through the crowd. Four rats are hurrying through an assortment of turns and obstacles, trying to reach a molding morsel of cheese fixed to a spike at the far end. A monk with scars on his face directs the proceedings. The scarred monk looks up at you. Here to bet? I have questions. Ask away. Are the rats magical? Why do you gamble so much? Do the rats enjoy racing? What can I win? Are the rats magical? What? No. Why would we use magic rats? They just run, after all. What a horrible idea, anyway. A magical rat. Um... Why do you gamble so much? If you're really interested, ask one of the others. I'm busy. Do the rats enjoy racing? I don't know. They run without prodding. Could be they like the cheese. The monk is called away by another to supervise another race. Um, should, I, should I bet? I wish to bet, you declare. This should be an interesting race. The monk handling the wagers assures you. The stake will be 30 gold pieces. What do you say? Oh my god. Uh, that is too much, you admit. The scarred monk shrugs and the race begins. You leave the rat course behind. I don't have any money. Okay. Should I just fuck the whole thing up? Doc is heal disease. What about seeing the future? Oh, if I win the bets or not? Okay, fine. You sit cross-legged on the ground and put your palms on the orb. You craft the enchantment and everything you can imagine using this. You see yourself laying down bet after bet against a table full of scurrying creatures, but without rhyme or reason. Days seem to pass and you grow thin and haggard, the crown forgotten in an ecstasy of gambling. The vision of rather puritanical one at that fades. So wait, am I, if I gamble, am I going to just get stuck here or something? Okay, what else can I do? <laughs> you need to talk to the rats. Maybe I could. Am I within a certain distance? Taking the wig from your pack, you wear it and form your spell. There are no animals around to talk to, but from the rat race course, you can hear a tiny voice. I win again! The cheese is mine, you bumpkins! It seems the gambling at the monastery goes on even in the middle of the day. I win again. The cheese is mine. <laughs> okay. Even the rats are gambling. Um, I don't know if I can do very much besides throw a fireball, so I don't think I'm going to do it. Mm. What about how? Reaching up to the constellations, you create the spell. A quiet voice begins to speak to you. Effie may take you into her grace, but she is a fickle patron. The rats continue to bicker and argue from the race course. Okay. Uh, I didn't go in the dice chamber, so let's go in there and uh, win in Swindle Stones. You walk over into a long room set with a wooden table on which several games of Swindle Stones are being played. You find a monk who grins at you. Fancy a game, brother. We stake ten gold pieces in Effie's honor. The stake is too much. I have. Oh, I don't have it. That is too much, you tell the monk. Here then. He hands you ten gold pieces from his pocket. In Effie's honor. Now a game. 
Oh, okay, let's go. Three dice. All right, let's go. No cheating. Good hand. Go. Un unbeatable hand. Actually, it's an unbeatable hand. All right, you, th you think there are one of those? All right, do I say there are four? I think I get him off guard here. There are four of those. Four threes. Call it, that's fine. Got it. Yeah, there's no way you bluffed that early. Okay. I'm gonna get, uh, let's get weird. One, two ones. Hmm. Hmm. Uh oh. Okay. I have one of them. He only has two dice. Three twos. I could call three, but I think he knows that he... That's kind of hard. I'm gonna, I'll do it. I'll do it. Three fours. Okay, now you're in trouble. What do you got? One, one? Two ones. Three ones? Oh, thanks for playing. Hey, thanks for the free money. That was fun. This guy gave me 10 bucks to make sure he could play dice against somebody. And then he lost it. So I got 20 bucks. I got, this guy gave me $20 to play a game with him. I win, don't I? The monk nods with great pleasure and hands over 10 gold pieces as you take back your stake. A fine match. Another? Let's increase the stakes a little. So this is how they, this is how he wants to get you. This is what he, okay. So he wants, we won. I'm done. I'm done. The monk nods. True luck does not always favor play, he agrees. You get up from the long table, the monk bidding you goodbye. I just left with 20 extra gold. And we're taking it right to the rats. Oh, I need 30. Never mind. Shit. Yeah, guys, I'm going to win. I'm going to walk away from that table. I made 20 bucks. And I'm going to go sit at a different table. I walked away from that. Come on. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to play the rat race. You have to play one more time to get enough for rats. Oh, hey, a win is a win. I'm taking my 20 bucks out of here. Rat, it's too much. Rat is 30. I wonder, hold on. Let me go back in the hall. The monastery is busy and peaceful yet enough. Okay. Can I run into that? I'm, I'm, shit. I think I missed my opportunity. I think I missed my opportunity. I could probably go back to sleep, which might not be a bad idea. No, damn it. All right, I think I, I think I gotta go. Oh. All right, ten gold. Let's go. Two ones. All right, check this out. I'm gonna say there are. Th I'm gonna say there are two ones. No. 
There are two of those. There are two of those. Two threes. Two fours? You need to have them. I, I don't think you have them, but you need to have those. I could say three fours. Or go with three twos or three ones. Uh, I'm going to call it. Yep. Okay. Yep. It was a risky play, but I got it. How about one one? Two ones. So you have both of them. Let's see it. Ooh! Okay. Shit. I mean, I have one of those. Call it. Oh, there's no way you've got a double twice in a row. No way, right? Yeah, we're good. Uh, I can ruin this whole thing for him. Watch this. Let's go all the way up here. Two of these. You're full of shit. You don't have one of those. Uh oh. No, no, no. Uh. <laughs> I, I, have, I have one too. I fucked it up so bad, I think. That was not a bad play, though. You can't tell me that was a bad play. I could call him right here. No, I have to say there's one three. Yes! Why would you do that? He just threw it away so bad. What? I had 37 gold. All right, now I'm up. So now I can do one more. Okay, one, two. Uh, yeah, there are two twos. I've got, a, I've got one, three twos. Yes, I mean we. All, I mean, there's no way you have it. Goodbye. A, far a random farmer is better at this than the literal acolyte of the gambling god. But the farmer was cheating. Okay, one, one. Let's go. Let's really fuck him up big time. Watch this. Two, f two threes. Let's go right off the bat. <laughs> I know that was funny. Okay. One. Three. Oh, I dare say there are two threes. Do you think there are three? I would dare say there is a third one. Hey, I'm, I'm of the philosophy now. Now you just bet till you lose. And when you lose once, you're done. I, I'm up. I'm up, like, uh, more than 100%. You know what I mean? At this point, like, you play till you lose one fucking hand, and then you leave. Okay, one, three. Uh, this might... I'm, I'm gonna go all the way. Let's, let's make him have to commit to saying that there are four. Which I doubt is true. Wait a minute. There are two twos. Okay. Okay. Well, guess what? I think there are three of those. 
No, make him have to say five. What? Wait, 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 wait. He only had three? Don't call it, please. Okay, two... Uh... Hmm... He might have two of them. Oh, shit. Of course he does. Wait, 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 what just happened? What, just, what did I just do? What did I just do? What did I just do? Did I do something, did I do something wrong? What happened? Wasn't I just trying to say that he didn't have those? Wait, what? Oh, I fucking... I screwed up. One, two? Why can I not say there... Oh, there... He, he's saying there are two ones. There are three ones. Uh-oh. There are, though. Yeah. Sorry, that's one too many. Uh, there's one four. Ooh, okay. This is where we get him right here. Because he has to have a double, and I'm willing to take that risk. Brought it all the way back. Let's go. Okay, now we got him, because we we both... Wait, he might be lying. Uh, there's one... <laughs> Hold on. If he has one of those, there are two in play. I feel like I have to just say there's one of these to... Mi no, I have to make him say there's three. But what if he doesn't have one? He might just be... Usually if you have one, you don't say the thing you actually have. So if I say there's two of these and he has like a two, then I'm I lose. I think I have to just say one. <laughs> one of us had to. But it's I I'm, aren't I always screwed in that case? Did I actually throw? Because I, he could be making it up still, but now he's not, though. So he wasn't making it up. When you have one die left in well, Liar's Dice or Swindle Stones, whatever you want to say. I, I mean, if he says one, two, if he, if, if he says one, three, he could have like a four under there. So he actually did have it. He actually did have it. But he wasn't lying. Last one. All right, one, four. There are two twos. Three twos. What's the chance that you have two of those? None. Uh-oh. This is a good hand for me. Let's say there's one... three. No, no, no. No, no, no. One... okay. Ooh. There are two of those. There are... Okay, so, so you're telling me every single one of yours is... All three of them. You're full of shit. Yeah. Okay, two and a four.
Mm. There's a couple ways to do this. There's do it for real, and we both have one, two. You might have two twos. Let's go with this. Call it. All right, come on. Shit. Do you have two? Do you have snake eyes? Please, you don't. You don't have two. Ah! <laughs> Come on! No, no, no. I'm winning this one. Check this out. Okay, what was this first one? You, you definitely have to. He's got to. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get my money back. How about two ones? One, two, okay. Fuck. No, no, no. No, no, no. The probability that this is wrong, he's going to call this because he's going to be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Because I don't think he has a two. He's just going to call it. And I'm going to lose. I mean, I'll do it. It's like the best play, but he, he, yeah, he doesn't have a two. If he has a two, that'd be crazy. Wow. How did he have a two? Okay. All right, we got the money back. One, one. Well, I dare say, wait a minute. He could be lying, but let's just call him out on it. There are two ones. Call it. That's fine. There cannot be three ones. It's physically not possible. I will take my money back, please. Okay. Hey, look at that. We're exactly where we just were. Can you lend me more money? Can you lend me more money? I cannot. If he does not wish us to be generous, as generosity defies the action of luck. Okay, that was fun. The monk nods. You get up from the long table. You bid the monk farewell. So I just want to make sure I get this uh, clear with everybody here watching. The whole idea was everyone was like, get up. No, stop gambling. Get up from that table. Get out of here. Get up. And now bet even more over there is what you're saying. The price for entry is 30 gold over here. It's 10 over there. Okay. You head back to the rat course. Spectators stand to either side, gripping money. The scarred monk greets you. A bet, I hope. I wish to bet. This round will be an odd round. The monk handling the wagers assures you. It's 30 gold pieces. What do you say? An odd round. Should I watch one? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pass. You decline to bet and the race goes on. The rat you had your eye on loses by inches. Next round starting soon. Uh, you in for this one? It's 30 gold pieces. What do you say? No, no. You place your coin on a promising looking rat. The four rats shoot off, climbing a steep hill made of wood and paper. Your pick stumbles near the top. The rats then jostle through a narrow tunnel and your favorite nearly gains the lead. 
The rats round a sharp corner and then rush towards the finish line. Yours looks confident as it nears the end, though it's hard to tell with a rat. Your rat comes in. It scurries across the finish line with no room to spare. The monks groan as the race ends. The Sergeard monk hands you over your- I won! I got a hundred bucks! The scarred monk hands over your money grinning. The rats are scooped up and, and watered and then placed back at the start. They seem eager to go. Any vex for the next round? It's 30 gold pieces. Let's go again. No. You shrug, losing interest in the race. You leave the rat course behind. I got 97 bucks. That's good enough for me. I just have a question. My question is, how high are the stakes in the Swindle Stones gambling room? I just want to, I just have a question. You had seven before betting. I did have seven gold before I came in here. That is a monstrous increase. Uh, I'm going to take it and leave. I'm going to take it and leave. You make your way down the steps and out of the yard. It's time to leave. Back out to the road. All right, I'm going to go be right back. I'm going to refill my tea. And I will see you guys in a few minutes. I'll be right back.
I'm back. Sorry, I made a T. Took a little bit. I'm back though. Stop. I took I took a little I took a little extra minutes. Refunded. What are you betting on? What am? You guys making bets on when I was if what if I was gonna come back? <laughs> I just don't come back. Well, that would have been a crazy return. I'm imagining nobody was doing that. You would that would have been like a 100 to 1 return on channel points. All right, let's go. We stepped out of the gambling hall. Back into Mampang. And this is where we we ended up not very far from where we just were. We got attacked by bees over here. We kind of died. Do we want to go back this way again? I think I was going to go this way. That's where I was going to be. So let's just continue our journey the same way that we were going to go. Okay. The road curves along the edge of a tall stone wall, eventually reaching the door to the wheat fields. Not going back in there. We're going this way. It's where I was going to go before. Okay. You continue along the road. The sun has reached its highest point now. You pass a side street, leading off into a maze of smaller streets and alleys. The maze side streets are over here. Eh, side streets are fun. Let's go down here. You walk down a narrow street lined by low warehouses. You catch the scent of grain as you pass one. You're in, you're into the middle part of the day, and yet the citadel is still cold. As you turn a slight corner, you spy three guards walking towards you, one dressed in a, the finery of a captain. Distracted by conversation, they have yet to spot you. Um... Hide in a warehouse. You hurry quickly over to the door of a nearby warehouse and slip inside. I'm not messing with that right now. The large warehouse is filled with stacks of crates. But as you enter, you hear a guard speak. You see that? See what? Someone just went in an outbuilding. Footsteps grow louder as they approach the entrance. Hide. You duck into the narrow passage between the crates, weaving in the gloom. The air here is stuffy, and you resist the urge to sneeze as you disturb layers of uh, dust. Oh, thank God. Hidden, you watch the three guards stop at the threshold trying to catch sight of you. It still must be in here, one says. They begin to creep along, probing stacks of cloth with drawn blades. Their captain stands at the entrance, feet planted wide. Her skin shimmers in the dim light. There is magic at work. Alright, um... I don't know. I feel like waiting is a bad idea, but so is this one. And this is probably the worst idea. Maybe slip? Alright, I'm gonna wait, and then I'm gonna slip. You continue hiding, waiting for the moment to strike. The guards blunder through the warehouse, walking down corridors of crates. They penetrate deeper into the warehouse, leaving the captain alone at the threshold. Hunt down the guards. Okay. Uh huh. Should I do that? That's a blunder move. That kind of is a blunder. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm leaving. With the two guards now far away, you are able to sneak towards the exit. You creep past crates until you are a short distance away from the captain in the doorway. Her skin is still shimmering in the light. Find anything? She shouts. Not yet! Comes a voice from the back of the warehouse. Just charge her.
Let me turn this down a little. All right, uh, law, I, th I they're intelligent. They're not non-intelligent. Purr. I can't cast it because I don't know it. Jig is easy here. It's always funny. Zap is always here. Uh, I could fart. I could make the whole room smell. That's comedy right there, too. Do we want to do the comedy spells? Or the damage spells? I feel like I never have a playthrough with this, so I'm going to do it. You grab your nose plugs and stick them into your nostrils before casting the spell. A terrible odor begins to blossom from your sleeves in a choking cloud. The smell tickles your nostrils, but does nothing to the captain. She's not wearing nose plugs that you can see, so how can this be? The captain peers into the gloom and then smiles as she spots you. There you are. Oh, I just made myself really smelly. Uh... Well, for all time's sake, let's zap! You spin the constellations into shape around you, winding a powerful electric force in your hand. But the bolt simply vanishes upon touching the captain. She laughs at your attempts, hefting her blade. It seems she is protected from magic somehow. The captain laughs at your spell casting. You think I am not prepared? I'm a much stronger sorcerer than you. The shimmer around her is an effect you have seen before. Not a force field, though, not that. The captain watches you with something close to amusement. Um. So what's going on with her? So I have to counter it. Shield? It's not a shield, though. Um. I'm not sure I can do anything here. I don't think there's a mini mite here. Um. Is it walk? Check the spell book. Oh, here we go. Not Zen. Not Doc. Not Giant. Counters Gak, not blue. Wait, is, no, Gak is, yeah, Gak is blue. It's not big. Not fix. No. So what spell is she using? I'm just... no. She's using mag? That's what it sounds like, but didn't she say this wasn't a, wasn't a shield? It's not a force field. Okay, so, but it's a magic force field. Do I... I don't think I can, I can cast anything that counters it. I could just attack. Is it a projection? Mag has a counter. I don't think I learned it, though. And I think you need to have learned it for it to work. Someone's going to play the flute. Uh, what else can I do? <laughs> I 
I'm casting this. I don't even know what it is. Cast a spell and a bounty of cats appears from somewhere. They scramble all over the crates, meowing in a rowdy chorus. Is that the best you can do? The captain finally steps forward, blade in hand. Okay, I, I didn't do anything. Uh, we're going full blast. And it was a great call. That's four damage. And I'm going forward again. I don't even need to look. That's what we call horseshit in the industry. That's what we call horseshit in this fucking industry. Okay. Uh, the captain gives you two quick jabs. Wheedling around your weapon, you stagger backwards, clutching at a bleeding wound. I made up for it. Okay, captain steps back. I'm gonna def <laughs> okay. I feel like I could do that again. Oh, fuck you. Where'd you get that? You've been doing moves the whole... Whatever. Again. I'm being so greedy. And look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That's so stupid. Actually stupid. I lost so much health. I want to do it again. Okay. It's not again. Yep. This time you do 3.2 instead of 4.6. Now we've... Okay. She steps back. I'm going to full blast it again. Struggles to hide the pain. She keeps an eye out. Um... Yep. I think it's full blast again. She shifts away. It's okay. Um, I'm going to defend. Full blast again and we win the game. See you later. Okay. You thrust your blade through her neck and she falls. The captain may be dead, but the remaining guards burst out ready to avenge her. You only have just enough time to flee the warehouse. Get the hell out of here. You race out of the warehouse and up the road, managing to keep the... You, you're ahead of them. You got ahead of the guards. Let's go this way. You pick your way through broken buildings and through the wreckage of fallen homes. It seems the city once housed a lot more people than it does now. Perhaps its life is simply ebbing away. Across the ruins, you can make out the stalls and tents of the bustling market. The sun is beginning to lower, and the air begins to cool. Uh, we already went to the market, so we're... I'm not going to run back into them, am I? No. Okay. I can go back in the warehouse. It's foolish. I do have 90... Hold on a second. I have 97 gold. Wasn't there something I could buy at the market that I couldn't afford before? I don't think they sell food at the market. Oh, I could get the mirror. Yeah, we're gonna... Let's go back to the market. If I can buy that mirror, I want it. Because that lets me do what exactly? Let's see. I can do kin. In battle, a gold-backed mirror must be pointed at a creature when this spell is cast. An exact replica of the enemy will then be created under the caster's control. However, should either creature die, both will disappear. I think that's worth it. That's amazing. Yeah, um, it's like 40 gold. I can afford it. I'm gonna get it. Whoa. Where did we just go? Uh, it's up here in the stalls. It's the peddler. All right, I'm back. I want that mirror. 48 gold pieces. This is so annoying that I have to pay that much, but I, I want this. And do I have glue? No, 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 no. That's not. I'm done. Yeah, and I'll get the cutlass. What do you have? 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I will take the broadsword. I don't want that. He already sold it. He doesn't have it anymore. Well, that's not good. Okay, well, let's go this way. Which way now? Um, we've been here. We've seen most of this part of the city. We have the right side here that we haven't done. We have in here that we haven't done. And this is going through the front door where the Archmage is. Didn't do this over here. There's still a lot over here as well. Uh, I'm going to complete the western side. Okay. The monastery is closed. Need to get food. I don't think anybody sells it. At least not right over here. I have a blimberry potion though, don't I? Alright, we're not going to get trapped over there. We're going to go this way. The road leads away towards a ruined portion of the citadel. The night air is cold. Uh, okay. I do remember these. These are interesting. I'm not going to spoil it, but they're very fun. The road ends in a tall wall of obsidian black bricks. Tall enough to keep out a giant. But the wall has crumbled. Brought down by the piercing gripweed vines that cover its length. You could scramble over the fallen stones and inside easily enough. Cold night lingers on. You scramble up onto a block and peer over the wall. Beyond stretches an empty region of lapping water, from which tall, isolated, gloomy towers rise. Strange noises reach you from across the wall. We're going. You scramble up and over the broken wall into a narrow strand of stone on the edge of a watery pool. Towers rise on all sides, connected by spidery paths. Sand is scattered over the edge of the pool. It's free sand, I'll take it. Oh god, what do I do? Uh, you scoop up a couple of handfuls of usable sand, the path between the towers awaits. You leave the shade of the wall and follow the stepping stones out across the water. Everywhere the signs of ruin abound. Weeds crack the stones, turret roofs, and buttresses have collapsed into heaps. Why has the Archmage allowed such ruin? Surely the rumors of his death cannot be true. What is this place? It looks like no part of Mampang you've yet encountered. The air itself is somehow different. There is a tension here. The air itself feels tightened, as though the world is stretched thin here. A taut drum skin pulled over a too wide a frame. It feels as though the tiniest step might unleash a powerful rupture. Look at the stars. You look up for the stars but can't find anything. The starlight seems to bend and divert before it can reach you, as though it's being funneled away. What is happening in this place? The path splits here with the shortest way leading up to an arch doorway in a nearby tower. Okay, what's in that tower? You look over at the nearby tower. It is squat and ugly, with a low, slightly squalid archway leading inside. Uh, I'm going to sleep here. Putting down your pack, you try to rest despite the cold. You have eaten nothing today, but you have no provisions. Only two vials of blimberry juice. I will take a Blimberry Potion. Uh, you gulp down a mouthful, you feel somewhat improved, and your hunger is abated. Then you get comfortable and rest. You roll over trying to sleep, but you cannot seem to rest. After a while, you get to your feet and begin to walk through the darkness. Crumbling walls and broken towers move past on either side. You are walking past an old, crumbling building when you hear voices. 
Can you starve to death in this game? I believe you can. Every time you do not sleep, you... If you... No, no, no. Every time you do not sleep after eating. Like, you have to eat. Can you? I'm really thinking this through here. I think you can, because you take, like, three damage if you don't eat. Even if you sleep. You're confusing me? I'm confusing myself. I'm pretty certain you lose a few health if you sleep without eating. So, eventually, yes, but you could always rewind. Okay. Uh, let's listen. You listen closer, leaning against the wall. It sounds like a distant crowd. Too far even to be on the other side of the wall. Where are these voices coming from? Uh, let me look over the wall. Looking over the wall, you spot a missing brick. A green-gray mold has covered the gap, coating the interior with fuzz. Ooh, I love green mold! Wait, this is not the same mold? As you lean down to peer at the mold, you realize the voices are growing louder. Uh, look at it. You squint, peering at the mold. It is unusually shaped, varied in color with peaks and valleys. Tiny bumps dot the mold, along with taller outcroppings that look like spires. But then something else catches your eye. Movement. Hundreds of tiny specks swarm across the surface of the brick, making circuits in all directions around the mold. What could they be? I'm moving away. You decide some mysteries are better left unexplored and move on. The wall is lost somewhere behind you. Let's get health for that. Oh, I slept. It was a dream. I thought I was awake. I did. I guess I did fall asleep. Okay, you gained a huge amount of gold and found no new clues. You pick yourself up to your feet. Try to shake away your more curious dreams. The wind picks up a little spray from the water and splashes it into your face. It stings where it touches you. How is the Archmage not aware you attacked his guards? Because he might. Pretty soon. Okay. Let's look. You'll lean out over the path and look down into the water. It is black, reflectionless, as though infinitely deep. Let's drop a stone. No, no, I don't want to drop one of my pebbles. I want to drop pebbles on the ground. God damn it. You drop one of your pebbles into the water. It sinks without a trace and without even a ripple. But you must keep moving. I just wasted a spell right there. That stinks. Ah, uh, there's this tower. We can go around here, which I believe leads to these two. This one, I believe, leads... Let's just go in this one we're in right now. We're standing right in front of it. Let's go inside. The early morning sun makes the air glow. You cross the waters and push your way inside the crumbling tower without knowing what you might find. Once inside, you immediately break out into a smile. This tower might be gloomy, but it's certainly a relief after the ruin outside. It's so nice in here. Look around. You have a quick peek around the room. This way and that. This way, that way. It is curiously dark. You pay special attention to the corners, hoping to find something interesting. A colorful spider, maybe, or some nice juicy moss. You don't see anything. And after a while, you start to feel a bit let down. The atmosphere of this place seems genuinely good for you. What a charming place. Look at the doors. You look over at the doors. There's one behind you and one in front of you. But when you try to count them, you find you can't quite manage it. It's probably because turning to look at one means the other one is behind. So you can't see it anymore. And you can hardly count something you can't see, after all. What? Eventually you decide there are most likely two doors here, even if you can't really be certain. You open your arms to cast a spell and end up falling over backwards and collapsing into giggles. Such a shame there's no one here to enjoy this place with you. It really is quite delightful. 
Uh oh. Sit down. You drop down onto all fours quite merrily. This is no kind of place to sleep, but it's a great place to cross your legs. You try crossing them one way and then the other, but neither way is really comfortable. You're forced to stand up once more. Clearly, there's something wrong with the floor. <laughs> you pause where you stand to regard the cracks in the flagstones underfoot. You trace them this way and that. They form loops, branch, and then rejoin. It is, you realize after some time, almost as though all the stones fit together. Wow. After tracing a crack for several minutes only to have it disappear under your own boot, you look up once more. You head for the door, but get distracted by the way the view of the world outside moves left and right a little. As you sway from side to side, you are soon standing on the spot and just swaying. I think I'm fucked up right now. I don't have a god to pray to. I'm just going to leave. Why would you leave? This empty chamber is fascinating. You turn around on the spot a few times to get a full view and fall over. Pray. You close your eyes and attempt to offer a prayer, but end up singing a song from your childhood instead. Five sight masters wearing spiky hats. The song brings a smile to your face, and it must be said, a tear to your eye. You have another try for the far door, though you are by now turned around enough that you can't really be sure which door is which. Stepping out into the open, you feel a slight headache coming on, as though you had drunk too much ale. <laughs> Let's go this way. He's... There's the weed room? I don't know what that was. Okay, next room. You step back out onto the path and follow it a short way. Three paths meet at this point in the shadow of the eastern rock. From the eastern tower, you hear the faintest sound of music. The air seems to fizz and crackle with secret energy. Which way now? So the eastmost one sounds like music. Music in here? I don't know what's in here. I'm gonna say maybe the one right next to me oh that's not good the air moves a little around you still icy but fresh you enter the next tower nervously this chamber is large circular and peppered with dark alcoves the floor the floor is pure marble as are the walls in the center, standing on a pedestal of rough stone, is a large stone sculpture of a ram. Ooh. Uh, study the statue. You pause to admire the statue. It is about twice your height, cut smoothly into the glossy rock. The craftsmanship is impressive. Sculpted fur that looks soft enough to touch. There's only one flaw. The eyes lack pupils and are instead solid white orbs. You cannot shake the feeling that the statue was looking at you. Look around the room. You scan the room. Nothing moves, but the darkness in the alcoves might hide something. Across the room is a set of double doors large enough that three ogres could walk through. Another doorway leads north, but the path in that direction has crumbled into ruin. Hmm. I could turn back to. I'm going to look at the walls. The marble covering the walls and floors is quite exquisite, but peering closer, you notice splintering cracks. What would have caused such damage? Just then, the statue behind you moves. It does? Its marble body groans with strain as its head lifts to face you. It shakes itself, the stone flaking. Two blank eyes stare you down. It jerks and twitches as it raises a leg. It brings a hoof down onto the stone. 
boom, I do exist. The air shudders with the force of a single step. Boom. The ram descends from the pedestal, never taking its eyes from you. Before you stands one, the Archmage's deadliest servants. One of us, the sleepless ram. You shift your weight, ready to leap out or attack, but the ram simply stares, unblinking and unmoving. Then it takes one more halting step, lowers its head, and begins to charge. There is no time for any singing. What? Why would I be singing? Just in case you know, there's no time for that. Wait for it. Should I just get hit by it? Wait for it. You hold your nerve as the creature pounds closer. Jump onto its back. That's kind of cool. You had a clue about this guy. Ooh, I think you're right. I actually think you're right. Oh shit, right here. Should have read my notes before going in the room. You can sing it to sleep. Uh. Whoops. I'm gonna jump onto its back. You grab and leap onto the creature's back, hoping to settle into place, but it's a hopeless cause. Instead, you vault clean over the ram, but it turns on a pinhead, rears and slams you down with both hooves. Despite its jerky, unnatural movements, the ram is incredibly fast. You spin in the air before bouncing off the ground, dazed. On the ground, you hear the thunderous steps as the creature turns. Oh, God. Uh, look around. You look around just as the ram barrels into you once more. Caught by its horns, you are carried bodily across the room until the creature slams you into the wall. Smash! Smash! The marble cracks under the blow, and you slide onto the ground, barely able to breathe. The thing backs off a short way, readying another charge. Get up. You get to your feet, nauseous. <clears throat> By simply entering this room, you have sealed your fate. This is now a fight for your life. Sing to it. You know the ram can be sung to sleep. But as you ready yourself to try, you realize Dintantia never mentioned what song to sing. Perhaps it is just music in general. Uh, Chawberry's Fields... Slang, oh slang. The wizards three. Oh mama, not again. Uh. Karama, oh oh, a o. <laughs> I don't know. Sing nothing. No, I gotta sing something. It probably doesn't matter. Let's do the analyst. Yeah, I, I agree. And a land lullaby. Facing the ram, you sing a soothing lullaby from your village. But the creature doesn't care. For the tune and charges, it knocks you down and narrowly misses crushing your skull like a melon as you scramble away. <laughs> um. I don't know. Kariyama? All right, Kariyama. Voice wavering, you try to sing songs half remembered from the fire pits of Kariyama. The song has no effect. You escape being gored by mere seconds. You're beginning to feel that Dintantia was lying to you. The Wizards Three. Oh, me. You barely can muster the breath to sing anymore. So you whisper the song you sang as you climb the steps into High Zaman. But just as before, the cheerful words seem foolish and quickly die in your throat. The ram charges the song has not worked. You are running out of songs, not to mention the bravery required to sing them. Oh, the, oh, the wizardry. <laughs> I, can I get it wrong this many times in a row? 
Oh, mana. What was it? It doesn't work. You sing weekly the strange wordless chant you overheard in the monastery of Efe as best you can. The song does not put the ram to sleep, but rather causes it to charge straight at you and miss. Okay, this is... I have... You sing weekly the song of slang chanted in the temple of Kare. The ram charges once more. What? Why was it... Did she just make it up? I'm going to open the door behind me and run out. Okay. Look into the stars. You craft the magic. The double doors at the end fly open. Then begin to fall shut once more under their own weight. You cannot make it in time before they slam. Oh, fuck you. You run... Why did I not go there first? You slip around the ram heading towards the double doors, but it is too fast. You try to avoid it, but it smashes your shoulder as it rockets past. This creature will charge as soon as you even blink. Um. Shit. Jig? What do I have access to? I don't have glue? Uh, zap is not gonna work. What about wall? Oh. Can't. Oh, slowness? I'll try it. <gasps> you move the starlight into order around you, and it seems as if the ram is plunged into water. It begins to charge, and yet is hardly moving. You have a few moments in which to act. Open the door. You tug on the far doors of the chamber, but they do not budge. Oh my god, I have to open this with Dop. I need to take a potion. I think I'll get out. This should fly open now. Open locks and doors. Yes! You weave the enchantment, the double doors at the end fly open, then begin to fall shut once more under their own weight. You dive quickly through, gasping for air. Alright, I made it. That was pretty rough. It's pretty rough. So now we're on the walkway. I don't know if I'm pressing a button. It keeps like jumping over. All right, so this is where we are now. Here, this leads to these ones. We're on the walkway above here. You stand atop a short walkway between the two towers. A stone archway passage holds a doorway, but the door has been bricked over. The work looks shoddy and rushed. Should I rest? Yeah. You're feeling weak, so you stop to rest and meditate. The middle of the day is hot. Eventually, you get back to your feet once more, somewhat refreshed. Here we go. For just a moment, you catch the sound of muttering coming from somewhere nearby. I'm going to listen. You press your ear to a gap in the mortar. You hear grunting, scratching, and the tearing of flesh. There is a thump as something is thrown against the wall and what might be a bone snapping. I don't know if I want to go in here. Should I just kick it down? Or do we avoid this? You kick the wall. It bows with the blow, mortar crumbling away. It is weakened. Kick the wall again. You kick again. The weakened wall does not crumble, but you do hurt your foot. Oh, please. <laughs> Why would I want to get in here so bad? This is going to hurt. You push against the weakened spot in the wall where you kicked and it gives way. 
The bricks crumble inwards, leaving a choking cloud of dust. A moment later, two goblins squeeze through the hole in the wall, knocking you to the ground in their haste. It seems they were bricked up inside the tower. All right. <laughs> they they want to... No, I'm not going in. <laughs> I'm not going in. <laughs> I'm not going in. They are trying to get away. Why would I want to go in? <laughs> and he said, oh my god, you're good. Fine, I'll listen to that person. We're going. Stealing your courage and with your hand at your sword hilt, you step inside the foul-smelling tower. What's the worst that could happen? Let's go in. Let's go in the goblin room. You step into the chamber. The smell is worse than you could have ever imagined. A few of the goblins look up from their rampant cannibalism to stare at you with slack-jawed expressions. How long have they been stuck here? Jesus. Well, I don't have very much power. Uh... I could make a giant. I could blow the gale horn. I could make a shield. I could create the illusion of worship. Let's pretend I'm a god. That might be kind of fun. Do I just pretend to be God? That sounds fun. Yeah. Consulting the constellations overhead, you bind the spell, and your jewel of gold begins to shine and gleam. The goblins nearest to you collapse to their knees, wailing and supplicating, with the crazed mob cowered by your spell casting. You have a moment to act. I'm going for the far door. You take advantage of the lull to race across the room. The door to the east is closed, and the door in the west wall is open. Okay, where are we? So, this one is closed? So this one's open. Alright, we're going, we're going west. Wait, what? Retreat. I don't want to retreat. I want to keep going. Isn't that the west door? You try the door. It is locked. Your spell will not last much longer. If you cannot escape, you will be trapped in here with these creatures. Um. Do I have a key? This is the key to the prison cells of Kare. I don't... I don't think this is gonna work. You have a key. You try it in the door, but it doesn't fit the lock. Your spell gives out and the goblins begin creeping up on you. Smash the door down. You charge the door with your shoulder and it shudders, but it does not break. Goblins leap up, clutching your arms and chest in a frenzy. You are brought down, rolling along the sticky floor as more pile on top of you. Pain flares up along your body as the crazed goblins tear into your flesh. You try to open your arms to cast a spell, but your limbs are pinned. The creature's already flaying strips of skin. You convulse as your gut is ripped open. <laughs> Looking down, you see two fighting over your liver, shoving each other away as they devour it. Curse you! Curse you, fucked up goblins! You open your mouth to cry out, but a beefy goblin kneels on your throat, fingers clawing at the sweet taste of your eyes. Long nails find their target, and everything goes black. You have been devoured by goblins. You're dead. You feel the cold veil of death surrounding you. But... 
What's going on? And a moment later, you find yourself moving. What's happening? Oh! 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 oh. What's happening? P. Where am I? My skin, my my eyes, my flesh, they were eating me? Where? What do I? I can't cast anything. I can cast. Zed. You do not cast the spell, but rather it casts you, pulling you open only to scatter you into the winds. You are being wrenched in directions you did not know existed. The pain is unbearable, and just when you think you will go mad from it, the forces tear you apart. Then, you hit the ground, in one piece in the thin alleyway leading from the grate. It is where you met the beggar, but he is nowhere to be seen. You've lost one point of maximum stamina. Check myself over. You pat yourself down. You're quite alive. What is more, you have all of your possessions, all your gold, all your knowledge, everything is intact. The narrow alley mouth opens into the square... You need to rest. The alley isn't a bad place to rest. It is quiet, secluded, and offers plenty of shadow. Removing your pack, you try to settle under your habit, despite the strange noises that drift through the air. I'm alive. You close your eyes and let your tiredness overtake you. What is left of the night is restless with visions. Through it all, you feel the heat of Annaland burning should your quest fail. Uh, you lost a little maximum stamina, died, and found no new clues. The Archmage remains uh, completely unaware of you. Okay. You get quickly to your feet. You have not been discovered, but you should not wait any longer. And now you are understanding what the fourth episode is like. Welcome to Zed. There are no rewinds in the fourth episode. If you die, you cast Zed and you have to come back and do it all over again. That's where we are now. So as you see, I'm back here. I'm about to go back into the square. And I say that because you're noticing something over here. Where are my pins? They don't exist. Yep. All the progress is physically gone, but we have the knowledge of going there. You keep all your items, you keep all your gold, yes. But the progress you made is reset. So can you buy the sword now? Yes. That is, is the first thing we're going to go do right now. So imagine that this just reset to zero. But I stayed the same. So we don't technically have to do it again. No. I mean, I think there's a lot of stuff to get. So you can be zedded dozens of times, I think, if you really wanted to. Although you're going to lose stamina every time. So it's not the greatest thing. Not the greatest idea. Uh, but yeah, let's go get that weapon. Could you dupe swords? I... I feel like there's no amount of money that you... Because it's 600 gold. I think that that's why it's 600 gold. Because if you played through this game and technically saved every single cent, you might get close to 500 600? 
I guess maybe you could get two, but why would you ever get two? If you gambled enough, yeah. The jewels? Can you check out that line again? Oh, that's right. Yes, I can. All right, now we're going to go over there with, with knowledge. Uh, we didn't do anything with the statue, but I'm not going to do that right now. Let's go clean up this stuff over here. Because I do want the weapon. Okay. Let's keep... Everything is exactly the same, so if, if you notice that I'm kind of speed running through some of the dialogue, it's because it is identical. All right, let's do it. Uh-huh, there is showing his wares. We want to go to the peddler. Oh, no, 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 we don't. No, we don't. There's nothing else here I wanted, right? Hmm. I don't think so. Although, I guess it remembers if you did buy something. Because I can't buy the mask. Uh, not the mask, the uh, mirror. How much is it? 18 gold? No. I'd, I'd rather... No. That's not happening. Oh, I think it's because technically we already own it, so it wouldn't become an option. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't know if you could buy stuff twice. All right. Here we go. Do you buy gemstones? I was told you might. I might. May I see? Take a look. No. Gems for a sword? How about this? It's my finest blade. Okay, I'm making the trade. You take the blade and hand over the gems. The sword is truly magnificent. You have never held anything like this. The merchant nods with evident pleasure. Cool. What else do you have? I don't want a broadsword. Uh, you are not from Mampang? Did we already ask this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We already saw this. Okay. Farewell. Thank you. Wow. I think it defaults to the best weapon. I think it's a plus six. I should not have any trouble fighting anymore. All right. What else did I want to do over here that I got wrong? Maybe the... The captain? By the glue? Fortune teller? Oh, yeah. I want to go back to that line. Fortune teller. Okay. So, I'm put... What is the play here? So, you get to the long line. Talk to the creature ahead of me. Creature ahead of you is a hobgoblin. Hey, like, what's going on here? Oh, you don't know? Uh, how, why are you waiting here if you don't know? Oh, so I saw the line. So you just joined? Well, I suppose when I first joined the line. Okay, all right. Uh, how long have you been waiting? A few hours. What do you mean this time? Oh, this isn't my first visit. I always... I, you can't go here just once. Did you say wide? Yeah, that's right. Fair and wide. Okay. I would like to get back to waiting. Okay, here we go. You wait, a thin creature emerges from the building with a curious half-smile on his face. Am I just going in right now? I think I just go right in, immediately. You slip out of the line, which closes up behind you, and you walk towards the door of the building. A wood golem stops you. What do you think you're doing? Get out of my way. The wood golem shakes its head. You wait your turn like everyone else. Mm. It's better that way. Uh, are you a threat? Is that a threat? Is that a threat? Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. It's advice. If you visit a fortune teller early, fortune they give is less precise. So that pays to wait as long as you can. Um, push my way into the building. 
You push the creature aside and barge your way into the building. To your surprise, those waiting in line give no response. Alright, I'm in. <laughs> you step inside the low building just as the black elf leaves. Inside, the room appears to be empty. Then a moment later, you notice a squat, ugly figure behind the door clutching a pot. Okay. The creature meets your eyes and stares with fear. It's clear he was about to try to strike you on the head. <laughs> Who are you? Get, give me that thing! You grab for the pot and toss it away into a corner. Sorry about that. I saw you come and you see, I knew you'd be trouble. You are far and wide? Uh, in indeed, I am. Uh, the greatest fortune teller in Lower Mampang. The only one, really. The others were all, well, unpopular. And you are very popular? The line outside is long. You're very popular. And loyal. I could tell my little ruse wouldn't work with you. So I didn't bother. People who come looking for fortunes never really want to hear them, you see. They always want to be just about to hear them. So that's what I do. You are a con artist. No, oh, no. I really can see their futures. All of them. But why tell them? Who wants to know they're going to die of stomach blight? Or that their husband is going to leave them for a rock goblin? What good does that do again? So you are, you truly are a fortune teller. Mm hmm. More's the pity. Please leave. What is my fortune, you demand? Won't say. Can't make me say. Do it or I'll kill you! <laughs> you ball you your fingers into a fist. Told you you'd make trouble. I'm never wrong, see? So tell me my fortune. You are an imposter! You tell him. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Will you answer a question? Mm -mm. <laughs> Let me ask you, is it possible to pass the Throven doors? Wide throws his hands over his ears. Please don't ask me anything. Everything you say makes it more and more obvious. Makes what obvious? Who you are. Then shakes his head sharply from side to side. Oh, it's no good. It's no good. It's too late already. Please go, please go. I've got people waiting. Oh, shoot. Oh, butterfingers. Oh, you were in... Oh, boy. You walk away from the unfortunate fortune teller and leave the building once more. Outside, the line shuffles forward as you emerge. Oh, he's improvising now. He's improvising. Hey, what the fuck was that, dude? What? What was wrong with that? Looking furious about something. Yeah. All right. Well, that was fun. I don't think I did it right, but it was still humorous and fun to do. I... Did I miss something? What about the hawker? Something else I could do here. Oh, this is okay. Can I get anything else from um, the stone? Is there another question I could have asked? You think you're going to finish this today? Oh, no way. No way. There's probably at least one or two more streams of this. Because I'm probably going to end soon. Probably like four hours. 
So if there's another three to five hour sorcery stream, we might get there. We might need one more to clean it up and move on to something else. No, not for more hours. I mean, at hour number four. So in like 20, 30 minutes. Four is not soon. Well, I mean like four hours streamed. There are no take backs. <laughs> you could beat the game in 10 minutes right now if you know. Yeah. I, okay. I could technically beat the game right now. But I, I want to experience it. I want to experience it. I don't want to just run to the end. There's a lot of fun stuff to still see. So I want to see it. Been too long. I can't imagine I'm going to play this again anytime soon. I mean, it's been six or seven years at this point. So you have to imagine it'll be at least a few years. Or I would do it again. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good to slowly and surely kind of take it uh, little by little. All right. So let's keep, let's keep going. I, I don't think I don't think there's anything else I can do here. But I'm gonna go. I want to go into here. I want. I forget what's in here. I want to go in there. Wait a minute. Uh, this is bad. You head away from the maze of stalls and shops. There is a sudden commotion amongst the crowd. People are shouting and pointing, looking up. The skies have been darkened by widespread wings. Birdmen. Let's watch. You watch motionless. Perhaps they have not yet seen you. The people of Mampang are terrified and scatter in all directions around you. The birdmen swoop down onto the ground in the now empty market. They then begin to pound across the flagstones, but not towards you. Instead, they enter the hut of the fortune teller, fair and wide. A moment later, everything is still. Oh no, they're, they're, gonna, they're gonna question him. Keep watching. What are they doing? Are they arresting him for talking to you? And will he sell you out? He's not going to sell me out. You stay low watching. Nothing happens. And then the thatched roof of the low building explodes outwards and the bird men rise from inside. Fair and wide dangles from their talons limp. The bird men wheel about and disappear towards the inner tower. Oh shit. I killed that guy. Do you think he talked? He's not going to talk. No. I mean, I did threaten him. I did say, tell my fortune or I'll kill you. Um, he probably doesn't think we're the nicest person, but he must know our quest is important. Why wouldn't he talk? Because I'm the Analander. I'm supposed to save every... I'm here to save everybody. <laughs> you are um <laughs> He's not gonna talk. He's gonna be it's fine. Rest in peace, goofy voice man. Oh, you're not, not gonna be able to hear that character again. That's sad, that's right. Alright, I wanna look in here. You stroll through the arch into a well appointed, empty courtyard. From a small booth by the entranceway, a guard nods to you, brother. Oh I've been in this I'm still in this disguise. You step out into the central courtyard that fills this enclosure. This place is blessedly quiet. With several routes leading out of it, a dome looks up at the sky. A fountain plays in the center of the courtyard. Search the courtyard. You look around the courtyard, but there isn't much to see beyond the fountain and the benches that surround it. The doors are a mixture of shops and storage rooms. A few brightly feathered birds flap past overhead. This little square is almost comfortable. Okay. Look at the fountain. The water from the fountain plays merrily over several stone statues set into the center of the bowl, arching satyrs. 
weeping maidens, aged men headbutting orcs. It must tell some legend, but what that legend might be has clearly been lost to time and the wearing water. Let's drink. You cup a handful of the sparkling water and raise it to your lips. A moment later, you spit it out. Gasping for breath, the water is quite foul. The door leads out to the main square of the inner city, but there are several other doors leading off from the courtyard. One is a signpost. Nylock. Did we hear about Nylock? Uh, I feel like I could die in any one of these. So... Uh, let's, let's just go in here. You slip into a small side room. Inside are a pile of crates and a side room that are marked with the seal of Kare. Let's take a look. There are several stacked crates, each bearing the official mark of Kare's first noble. What are they doing here? A few large empty crates lie undisturbed at the back of the room. Open an empty crate. That's isn't that kind of a... Doesn't that imply there's nothing in there? You open one of the large crates, empty and roomy. It occurs to you that you could hide your monk's concealing habit in one of the boxes for later. Oh. Stash my disguise? What? Okay. Open a sealed crate. The crates are nailed shut, but you manage to slip your cutlass between two boards. You pry off the lid. Inside are stacks of magical armor, the kind you saw used in Kare by Vic's army of werewolves. How could they possibly be here? And if it's here, is Vic here too? You saw several sets of lupine armor up close during your time in Kare. This looks similar, though perhaps not as well made. Okay. That's it. So I can hide my disguise in here. That's fine. All right. Which way now? Uh, let's just check them all. As long as I don't die. You approach the guard's room. The guard turns to you with narrowed, unfriendly eyes. What? There's a thief in the courtyard. Yeah. There is. Her name is Nylock. With that, she waves you away. You head back to the courtyard. Okay. Uh, side chambers? Interesting. You choose a small side door which opens to reveal dirty living quarters. A bare rug covers the floor and an unmade bed lists in the corner. A wood chest sits at its foot, facing an empty table. A chest. This is presumably home to some lowly guard or other. Pull up the rug. You grab the edge of the rug, cutlass at the ready. Flip it over. You flip it aside to find a small trap door set into the floor of the room. Open it. You grasp the handle and pull with all your might, but it doesn't budge. The door doesn't even rattle. Doesn't look closely. You feel along. You feel along the edges, discovering that it's a fake. The wood has merely been cleverly cut to appear like a trap door. You let the rug fall once more. Why? Open the chest. You squat down in front of the chest. There is no lock. Um, open it. You flip open the lid. Step back. Poison gas is coming up. You step quickly back, but nothing else happens. The box appears quite empty. Nothing jumps out of it. There isn't even a cobweb or a loose gold coin. Maybe this is a simple servant's room. Tip the box over. You lift the box out from under the table and turn it over. Then you hear a click from somewhere behind you. Look around. 
You turn and rush towards the exit, but you're too late. A heavy portcullis is dropped from the ceiling, barring the doorway. You are trapped. From somewhere nearby, you hear a hissing noise. Oh, God. You hold your breath to listen. The hissing is growing louder. Look up. You look up to see a greenish cloud descend from the ceiling. Poison gas. This is not anyone's living quarters. This room is nothing but a trap. And you have walked straight into it. God damn it. Can I do anything here? Um... I'm throwing a grenade. I can't. I used it to test the water at the lake an hour ago. What an idiot. Strength? Yep. Uh, Huff might work. Galehorn? You turn into the starlight and put the alignment around you, lifting the gale horn and blowing a loud note. The mighty gale howls about the room, blowing the poison gas out through the portcullis. The clean air tastes sweet. You approach the portcullis. Help! 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 It's not going to work. Let's look it over. Looking over the grate, you can see it descends from a hidden panel in the ceiling. But you can't see any switches or levers on the walls either side. Um, I'm going to lift it. In your healthy condition, you have no trouble lifting the gate. It rolls up and you hold it aloft before diving under it. Okay, so it was just a trap room. Alright, now we're going to go in here. Let's wait. Hmm. Wait a minute. Can I come out of this? Wait. No. There's a different one. Alright, let's go to Nylock's shop. I did come out from under that. You enter a trade post of some kind. A bald woman with one eye leans on a counter. Flanked by shelves stacked with goods and trinkets. At this moment, she's talking to a finely dressed traveler. Whoa. Trinkets. Okay. The merchant Nylock glances up as you enter, then returns to her bargaining. Still, I'm... Okay, well, I'm gonna take shit. You stroll over to the back of the room. Okay, the man and Nylock are both distracted by their bargaining. You pretend to examine a stack of pelts while spying some likely trinkets from the corner of your eye. Grab something and run. Quietly pocket something or don't risk it. I've never picked it because it always feels like the just die um, option. But it's funny that you can actually just grab and run. Somebody's just going to kill you. Maybe it works. Maybe it works. This option is always here. I never touch it. I feel like, should we just try? Like, if I grab and just fucking run, it might just work. Moving quickly you, quickly, you grab a jewel of gold off the nearest shelf. Clutching your prize, you race for the door. Nylock languidly presses a switch as you reach the door, and a thick rope net drops from the ceiling. You are trapped. Nice try, but this is Mampang. You have to be faster than that to steal from me. I'm sorry. I said, release me. I release me. I just, you cannot keep me here. I'm so sorry. I don't intend to. She pulls on a bell rope and a group of guards soon arrive. Oh, that didn't work. Bound and gagged, you are dragged by your ankles by two guards who mutter about the trouble caused. 
They gossip to passing companions about you. The tale of your exploits will soon spread through Mampang. This will make it more... <laughs> Don't say room temperature IQ. I was testing that. I don't know. I yeah, I'm trying to <laughs> What's the worst thing you could possibly do when you're trying to lay low is scream while you're stealing from a store. Like I'm going to just grab this and run out and bump into a bunch of shit on the way out. That's the worst thing I could have possibly done. Somebody said, "Hey, rewind." I can't. It's over. There's no rewinding now. And that's not a rule I put on myself. That is baked into the game now. It's over. Uh, the tale of your exploits will soon spread through Manpang. This will make it more difficult to blend in from now on, should you escape. Try to bribe them. You attempt to bribe them, offering rewards and fabulous riches. But through the gag, it is little more than the mummery of an idiot. The guards ignore you. <laughs> I'll give you jewels. I'll give you precious stones. <laughs> Hopelessly, you are dragged into the office of the commander of the guard. The room is windowless, but lit by a half dozen lamps scattered about. Okay. I love this picture. Is it a picture or is that somebody outside looking in? Wait, I don't know. No, there's no windows. Khartoum, commander of the guards of Mampang, sits behind a wooden desk covered in scattered parchments. Hello? Uh, I... Ow! Who is this? Khartoum demands. His high-pitched voice is an odd contrast to his grim face. That's... It's... It's... it's, it's, it's who is this? Khartoum demands. His high-pitched voice is an odd contrast to his grim face. Wait! He snaps before one of the guards can speak. This is almost certainly the Analander. Yeah, it's true. It's true. What can I say? The captain is taken aback. I did not expect you to admit it. Tales of your cunning are obviously exaggerated. Mm, are they? <laughs> he sighs. <laughs> it would appear so, yes. I should have you killed as fast as possible. Mm, why don't you try it then? What are you going to do? Uh, he stares back at you and you see fear creeping at his eyes. They tell the strangest stories about you. They say, for instance, that you are over a thousand years old. They say you destroyed the village of Kariyama in retribution for giving birth to the Archmage. They say you laid waste to the ancient world. Yeah. It's all true. You want to take a step forward? Huh? Bud? Buddy? Hey, pal. Hey, bud. Step forward. It's all true. Bud? Hey, bud, why don't you take a step? Take one step forward. Do it. Any of you. All three of you in the room. Hey, bud, step forward. It's all true. Perhaps. In the end, I am a soldier. I believe I can run you through with a sword. And if you get up again afterwards, I believe I can run you through again. I believe that if I toss you into our highest cell, you will not fly away. If you kill me... I will come back for you. <laughs> well, now. You really are as black-hearted as they say, aren't you? Ooh, we'd better then put this immortality of yours to the test. Guards, take him to the block and don't waste another moment of my time. You yank one arm free, then leap towards Khartoum. But the guards will not fail to protect their leader. They soon have your arms twisted up behind your back. <clears throat> the commander is grimacing. Get this one out of my office. Remove his head and bring it back to me. I need somewhere to keep my pencils. <laughs> How does that sound? 
Mr. Strong guy. <laughs> when I come back, I'm going to eat you. No, I'm going to eat you. Get him out of here. Your head bumps over the cobblestones as you are dragged up to a rough wooden block. A massive man, shirtless but masked, lounges in the shadow of the wall with an axe. The guards call him over. Welcome. Always nice to see a new face. What would your name be, then? Hate to have a face without a name. I am no one. You don't say. I've never met no one. Soon you'll be bloody nobody as well. <laughs> oh, what's that? You look up. You turn and look but see nothing but the sunlight gleaming off a high tower window. Yes, my lord. At once, my lord. The large man says to the empty air. Then he turns back to you. Order's been given. Yeah, well, doesn't look good for you. He scoops you up and positions you on the block, securing an iron band around at the base of your neck. Forgive him. I forgive you, you murmur as he raises his blade. The executioner smiles at you. Very decent of you. Here's my own forgiveness in return. The axe comes down. You've been executed. Zed. Spell finishes in a blinding net of starlight that winds around your body like a sheet. And here we are. <laughs> now I sprint to the commander's office and go, Surprise, you fucking bastard! Kill me again! Do it again! Come on! Oh wait, he, was, he won't remember. He actually won't remember. I forgot. Told you I'd come back. Who are you? We've never met before. I told you when I came back, I was going to eat you. Why? What, what did I do? Why are you doing this? I don't even know who you are. He knows about you, though. Yeah. All right. I'm going to call it here. We're good. Let's go to sleep. I don't have any rations or anything, but it's okay. He lost a little max stamina. Changed to using the cutlass. Discarded your disguise. Died again. And found no... He just still doesn't know? What? How? <laughs> what? Alright, this one here. You want me to chop this one's head off? Yes, I would like for you to kill that man. I'm the Archmage. Alright, this one here. The Islander. This guy right here, the guy? Yes, that's the man. Okay, you don't, you're not aware of him, though. He doesn't know. But yes, uh, episode four, the reason why a lot of people don't like episode four is because they got rid of rewinds and they make you have to stick with decisions and you're going to get it wrong and you're going to have to come back over and over again. So it's kind of turns the game into a little bit of a roguelike. Which is okay, but if you make a mistake up here, or like in here, or over here, the the fact that you have to rewind all the way to here is where this part gets a little grating. I hate dealing with the consequences of my actions. Yeah. Uh, but we have played this enough where I know, I know a lot of the major beats and how to get to them. Everything in between is kind of gone, though. I still love this franchise. I think it's one of the best games ever made. I just do. 
Uh, not because it's... I mean, it's, it's like, essentially one of the foundations of kind of, like, video game RPG-type storytelling stuff. So, uh, I love it, and we're going to finish it. Hope you all enjoyed it. Enjoy the rest of your, uh, I mean, your long weekend here. Uh, tomorrow is the, is the fourth, okay. So, let me take a look at the calendar. You can expect to see me again, probably like mid to late week. Let me see, probably like Friday. Friday makes sense. Come back on Friday. And I think I'm not going to do sorcery. We're either going to do armored core or something else. But Armored Core is currently the first the thing that's first up. What about Starfield? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think I've... I thought about it a little bit more. And right now. I'm not sure I want to start Starfield right now. That's a massive game. But... Um... Does that really matter? Considering the philosophy of the kind of channel now? Like, does that really matter? Oh, it's gonna take too long! It'll... It's too much to, to hang out and sit through. Does that really matter? Yeah. What about Final Fantasy 16? I actually got the urge to play that. I want to say like three or four days ago. It's just, it's it's such a, it's another one of those games that's like 30, 40, 50 hours. Oh, I just need the opportunity to sit down and do it. But I did get the urge to play it. I did really like it, so. We'll see, but I know for a fact that I'm playing Armored Core, at least. So we'll do that on Friday. And we'll see. We'll go from there. Finish Breath of the Wild. I I promise you, I will complete Breath of the Wild at some point before, um, I don't know. I don't want to eat a glove or eat like a shoe or something. Um, I'll just play it eventually. You'll see it. <laughs> at some point means nothing, sir. Hey. The Sorcery Council said that for a year. Turns out it wasn't true. <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good rest of your weekend. See you guys on Friday. Take care of yourselves. Call your mother. See you later. Have a great evening. Oh, also too, I do want to mention this very briefly. If you remember the GoFundMe that we were raising, uh, well, not we were raising, but that, like the way I brought up about the um, Science Center, the terrible tragedy that struck that family, uh, the GoFundMe goal has been crossed. As of, I believe, pretty, pretty quickly. So, that was, I mean, that was at least 15 to 20 grand that came through from this community. So, I just want to say thanks. Um, that's amazing to give. I'm, I'm just happy that that goal can be crossed. Uh, again, it's a, it's a really awful scenario, but just trying to put, um, just put some attention on it because... Uh, the Science Center people were, were a huge part of the Grotto Beast stuff, so. I just want to say thanks. Yeah. Have a great night. Take care of yourselves. Have a great one. And good night.
Also, mods, if you want to give a little context for people that don't know what I'm talking about, um, maybe link the, the GoFundMe. Just, it's just for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about here. The GoFundMe that was set up that we got uh, our attention to. Somebody brought it to our attention. And just wanted to give it some attention. But yeah. Take care. Good night. See you soon. Thank you.